Hello and welcome to Dash 28 Live. I'm your host, Mike Atkins, and today we're going to be bringing you a fourth round match from the Cult Arms Universal Battle Kings of War tournament between Sam Soden and Ed Herzig. I pronounced both your names correctly, right? Hopefully. Cool. I didn't check that beforehand. Probably should have. Uh, joining me here, we have uh, the commentator on the match. We have John Fox, Steve Hildrew, and Patrick Zor Allen. Uh, and you guys decided to do uh, a little something different. Uh, for your match here, you're doing kind of a themed battle where you both pick armies that uh, have an affinity for the Green Lady, and you're battling it out to see which army truly has the favor of the ladies. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. How did you guys decide to do that? Is that just something you guys like doing sometimes, or who thought of it? No, I'm, I'm a fairly crunchy game on myself. <laughs> So we just thought we'd give it a go. All right, fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. We 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 briefly considered both playing free dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> Get those stats because up. they do. They deserve uh, and, and then we and, and then we draw, obviously. And then you would draw. Yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, you yeah, draw. You draw. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's uh, bring up the lists. Uh, starting with Sam's. Uh, so Sam is playing uh, the Order of the Green Lady. Uh, Sam, could you walk us through your list, please? Okay, so, well, I've been playing Brotherhood since the first Uncharted Empire book dropped. I just, I was painting an elf army and then the book came out and I just dropped everything and started buying knights. So, I've been loyal at when they were not that great, and now they are good. So I've been rewarded for my loyalty. Um, that you can't be, you can't be I just went for the immediately, obviously cool stuff. <laughs> for a very subtle. It's very, very subtle. Yeah, it, it, it's no, it's not. It's not subtle now. <clears throat> It's essentially all of the best units in the list with the coolest upgrades. So I've got the Horde of Knights where, that can take two items. So I'm obviously going to take that. Um, lots of Order of Redemption, which is my favorite unit in the game, has been for a long time. And now they're better because Brew of Sharpness is cheap, uh, Boots of Striding is great, and they're 10 points cheaper. So What's not to like? Water elementals, because mostly because I needed the unlocks, oh. but they're good they're as so well. Good. They're so good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Best elementals. Especially for the combination of uh, knights. Mm. Uh -huh. And with and with all the heal as well. Pegasi, good chaff. Whoops. <laughs> um, I I started out with woodland critters. I I painted some woodland critters, and then I looked in the list and saw. Wait a minute, these cost the same. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then the absolute core of the list, which is the triple unicorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I they they're just so cool. They're just so cool. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of lightning. So, oh, heal too. That's eighteen. All right, all right. Eighteen lightning bolts, eighteen heals, and a surge of darkness to keep flyers honest. Nice, nice. All right, let's uh, pop over and talk about uh, Ed's Sylvankin list, where he has a couple of things that scout. <laughs> An entire army. <laughs> so, uh, no brew of haste for turn one charges. I've been playing this list on and off since the beginning of the year. Um, it, it was going to be Forces of Nature, but I 
haven't yet got around to assembling and painting all the centaurs. So I, I, I was going to a tournament and I thought, what can I do? 1500 points on quickly. And the forest shamblers and the tree men were a good way to use up points quickly without having to paint too much. Yeah. So the core of the list is three or four hordes of forest shamblers, two or three regiments of forest shamblers, two troops of Gur Panthers and the Wilt Father and another tree herder. And that kind of is there always. And then I mess around a bit with other stuff sometimes. I've been taking a bit of shooting, actually. I like the Master Hunter, uh, taking Kindred Archers sometimes for cheap unlock. But for today's game, I thought that um, I should bring some knights myself because I'm already outgunned enough on the Thunderous Charge and movement. So I brought the uh, Stormwind and because I knew in advance what I was fighting against, I took one of those items that people always say, it's very situational, but you know, today I know the situation is a good one. So I put fire on on the knights. I can't, I can't see me going wrong with that as long as they don't get shot off before they charge. Um, the list is very heavily and built I around. I just played the same list. Mm -hmm. The Wilt See, Father. I just played the list I always play. Right, I <laughs> so you're claiming the end game the system. This is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, basically, forest shamblers are okay, but when you add the Wilt Father and make them elite, then they get to be quite good. So, you know, as most things in the list have the verdant keyword, and that means that they all end up elite. So that's very nice. And um, I mean, Sam's faster than me. He hits harder than me. He's got more heal than me. He's got more shooting than me. He's got more regeneration than me. But I have got more scout than him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wearing a green shirt. And I'm drinking tea out of a green mug. And I brought the avatar of the green lady, so I can't really see this one going wrong, to be honest. <laughs> it, it's, it's, that is it's, not it's the green lady. Way. It's a that certain way. It's not the green lady, that is an elf in green face, and it's very <laughs> offensive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring up your, uh, your screen here. So uh, this is, uh, you guys playing Push, this is one of the epic dwarf uh, maps, uh, what are you guys using for your terrain heights? So we've got um, hills oh, three, obstacles two, the pond and the field both up zero, and we're playing the blocking and the woods as height eight. Okay, height eight. So if, so if you have any Thing. No titans on the board. So. But there's no titans on the board. Okay, so nothing can see over the forests or the impassable. Uh, and you guys are, of course, playing Correct. push, uh, and you're using those red dots for your push tokens, yeah? Correct. Okay. Uh, yes. So let's just, let's just walk through the deployments real quick then. Uh, we will start with Sam's uh, Order of the Green Lady up here on the top left. Can you walk us through uh, what unit you put where and which items they have? Yeah. So on the top left, I've got one of the regiments of Order of Redemption with uh, Sir Jesse's Boots of Side. Ne next along is one of the Pegasi, uh, the regiment with the Brew of Sharpness, then the Horde of Brotherhood Knights with the Banner of the Green Lady and the Brew of Strength. Next is the unicorn with the boomstick. Next to him is the unicorn with the shroud of the saint. A naked regiment of order of redemption. A unicorn with the tome of darkness. The two hordes of water elementals behind the hill. And the last Pegasus with the okay. same token. Okay. Uh, and Ed, could you please uh, walk us through your deployment, starting down here on the left with your Stormwind. 
Okay, so I won the roll off for deployment, so I, I took the bottom because it's quite nice to be able to approach that middle token um, without, you know, while hiding behind a wood. The storm wind are there basically to guard that flank um, as best they can. Then there's the avatar of the green lady, she flies so she can more or less go where she needs to. Then I've got a regiment of shamblers behind them, the forest warden. First tree herder who's got uh, the vicious upgrade and the first horde of forest shamblers. Then moving to the right, I've got a troop of uh, panthers. Behind them, another horde of forest shamblers with both of my uh, loot counters. Then the wilt father, nice and central, so that his um, aura can affect as much as possible. More panthers, another horde of shamblers, another regiment of shamblers, and uh, a last horde of shamblers uh, on the right. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, so at this point, so I'm really going to say... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can we go over uh, why why y'all chose to put the push tokens on on, on those units? Because I see uh, Ed has uh, packed his on, onto the central one, uh -huh. and then uh, Sam decided to split on the Pegasus, so, of course, without revealing you know any future plans, but... Sure. Well, I mean, you know, my army is an army that likes to stay bunched up because I I rely a lot on the Wilt Father's aura to make things happen. So, with that in mind, I thought I I might as well just bunch up in the centre, try and get the centre token, uh, and those other two tokens are also fairly central. And you know, if I can get those forward, take the centre one, then you know, even even if it's too Pegasi on the flanks get through, uh, I'm still in the money. So it's a pretty simple plan. Okay. My plan is fairly similar, to be honest. Try and do my best to guarantee that my two tokens get across, um, which, and then fight over, f fight over the central one with most of my hitting power all right uh well good luck guys uh have fun we'll be uh, we'll be watching i'll let you know if we have any issues um hopefully the the green lady favors one of you slightly more than the other and we don't end up in a dream uh, <laughs> and uh all right so have fun and uh we'll, sure. we'll talk to you soon you have uh what nine scout moves to do before the first turn yeah, I've got, I've got most yep. of my armies. So, okay, yeah, that, that takes a while. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and get started on those, uh, and then roll for your first turn, and you guys are off. Thanks. Okay. And they've gone. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. that. I mean... All right, so now we can talk uh, talk crap about them, there, right? Shit about their so here's my th here's what I was thinking about going through these lists. I was going through them, going, there's no bane shine in either of these lists, mm -hmm. right? There's maximum crushing strength of one in any of these lists. They are full of thunderous charge. So whoever survives the first charge, it then comes down to a grind off, right? Mm -hmm. and we've got two defense five armies with the radiance of life. There's more heal on one side than the other. Who's got the most nerve, right? So the tree herder and the wilt father are going to be nearly impossible to kill for that other army unless he gets like very lucky multiple charges off. Um, and he's also, he's, I don't understand the decision to put his tokens on his fast flying units. That just seems <laughs> incredibly weird. Well, especially so, since he had a, a, uh, a knight unit on the far left that is un unopposed that could have just walked across could have just wandered over right mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah we were we were talking about that as well and we went through it and we were like well there's no other units that he doesn't want in combat um and i guess he figures sacrificing their speed doesn't matter if literally all they're going to do is carry tokens yeah and just uh, run around I, I mean they do have a pretty clear shot to just walk across the board um the, the, the pegasus on the left does have to worry about those uh um the storm wind but they're also covered by two order of redemption, so it's not the worst in the world. 
Yeah, I, I think it's your case of just using an 80 point unit to carry the, the tokens. So it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, they're not going to get anywhere near combat. They're just going to walk behind the rest of the knights thundering forward. And also to point out, they can drop those tokens at any point and then fly off and do their thing. Right. There yeah. are units near those uh, that they could pick up later. Um, like especially on the right, if he marches 10 inches forward, eventually you can get the, the water elementals onto him. Um, and if you put them on the water elementals, you're looking at speed five and not able to march. So that is a pretty big deal. But he's got yep. two surgible, really good surgible units. Speed seven surge is really vile, but he hasn't got any surge. He's got the Tome of Darkness, so uh, he's got surge four. Yeah. Right, One surge of four, ones. right? Uh, yeah, so, really interesting. Um, I'm really interested to see how this happens because it's, there's going to be a, a smash about turn one or two. And then it's going to be grindy grind fest. Right? So the one thing that can kill the uh, the one of those tree herders is fresh charge because you're looking at like 14 wounds even against the defense six. Um, oh. But Ed, yeah, but Ed definitely has enough stuff to where like, yeah. he's not going to get a first charge. Absolutely not. I am surprised that Ed didn't put his tokens on one of those tree herders though. Um, because by putting on a four shamblers, he gives up the possibility to surge him. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, like, it, right. it's behind a wood. Theoretically, he could just move, if he'd have moved one of his tree herders right onto that first turn, he can effectively just back away with the token, hand it off to another unit, and he's free to do what he wants, right? Mm -hmm. it's, both of them have made interesting choices. But Ed, I, the other thing to notice is that Ed's layered his force where Sam hasn't. Sam wants to wrap around. Yep. Whereas Ed wants to take a charge, die, and then um, keep keep grinding on, right? Unit mm -hmm. after unit after unit in the grind. Whereas Sam's just going to try and smash and then try and hold him up and get a flank with something. It's going to be interesting if Sam can't, like, Sam has a lot of crush one, a lot of melee four. The elite does help. But if he doesn't kill something, uh, they're pretty much going to be completely healed the next turn. I mean, Sam has, what, heal 18? Plus regen on most of his units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gross. <laughs> and fire oil. He bought fire oil as well. Get in. That's just gross. Looks like Ed has won the roll for first turn and is choosing to go first. So he got to do his nine scout moves, and now he gets to move first too. Ouch. Mm. So he gets to put those cats right in front of all the units he wants to. Yep. Absorb yep. the charges and then smash face. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is cats are speed ten, right? They can get pretty far up. Yep. Yep. So they're playing push. Um, and the last couple of times I've tried to play push in a tournament, I have screwed up the scenario horribly. So let's make sure everybody watching understands the rules at least better than me. Um, the tokens, if you're holding them, are worth one. If the unit carrying them gets entirely on your opponent's half of the table, they're worth two. Correct. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, they do have to be entirely over. Um, so it? It's not majority over like in bait. Invade oh, is majority right. over, push is right. entirely over. Been right. that and, and dominate is majority within the circle as well, yeah. not entirely. Yeah. And the, the one marker in the middle, is that an objective or a token you have to pick up? That is a token. It is a token so, you have to pick up. Because yes. I feel like I've lost games before because I stood on it thinking it was an objective and never <laughs> said I picked it up. Uh, oh. Still not over it. Um, <laughs> um just, just point where it hurt you, Mike. Just point where it hurt you. Yeah, Show us on the dolly. <laughs> so, uh, I'll show you in my trophy case where I'm missing the thing, the award I would have won <laughs> if I picked up the phone. You have a trophy case? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's mostly full of painting trophies, so... It, <laughs> I'd take it, mate. I've, I've got a trophy for third place in a 10-man tournament. It's over there. That's it. I, I uh, finally built a wall shelf that has all my trophies on. The, the oh one master's God. thing that's actually legit, and everything else is third place. <laughs> right. How many trophies you got, John? Uh, about four or five. All right. I've been so, around more. I've been around longer than you have, Steve. When I played in tournaments, there's only four people turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Four-person tournament. You came in third. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, so, guys, the prize one is my team trophy at uh, Lone Wolf, obviously. There you go. There you go. Um, so we had a new uh, fac and errata drop today. 
Uh, and these guys did elected. We? Yeah. Did we? I didn't notice that. It's pretty clear. Really you should check it out. Yeah. There's this Facebook group where people it. talk about it. Maybe you should check that out. My phone um, is buzzing. Oh, look, 27 messages. I wonder what they're about. <laughs> and these guys decided that they didn't want to bother uh, with the rulings in that fact. So they are they are not playing with it. Um, they, well, they, they've chosen not to. Just they're not playing with the... Um, was the green lady having Pathfinder? Having Pathfinder, which which they both said they thought that she already had anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but but other than that, like the I guess the two big sort of lightning rods off of uh, this fact was they they toned Morgoth down a little bit and either clarified or confused multi chargers. Um, is there anything else in in the fact or rather that jumped out to you guys as as interesting or noteworthy? Or is it basically just those two things? Uh, those two were definitely the biggest things. Everything else was just clarifying, uh, I feel yeah. like, little mistakes. Uh, like the fanatic being an individual. Uh, yeah, the, the double exploding rats was a, a, a new one, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 No fun. They didn't nerf the eye in the sky ability for the goblin thingy, wing it. The wing it, no. Yeah, no, they didn't. No, they clarified it, didn't it? That uh, uh, oh, yeah. activities that take the, the, in the start of their turn or a phase don't count as acting in that phase. So, mm -hmm. they so they still shoot, shoot and shooting. use the yeah. same ability. So when they're yeah. wavered, they can still go, that one, it's that one over there, basically. Yes. Yep. Uh, so it looks like Ed is done with his first turn moves and he basically just looks like he just sort of solidified his position a little bit. Um, so if you guys are Sam, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do to this, this wall of wood that you're looking at in your first turn? Give up. Um, how far are the water elementals from that um, regiment? Too far for a surge. We've only surged four. Sixteen. Yeah, way far. Yeah. I'd probably. You need to move up out of twelve, right? Because that regiment's not going anywhere. So he, he does have lightning bolt eighteen. Um, yep. Which you know he's facing pretty much all defense five because Ed did leave his. Uh, his chat behind. Ed, Ed is playing very conservatively, which I don't know if I agree with. I, I feel like that gives Sam just more time to encircle him with his left horses. Um, Lightning bot 18 on that unit in the woods is only going to do three or four wounds, and it's not going to kill them because they've got a great man. Yeah, but he does have a... Uh, he can shoot the uh, the four shamblers on the far right, for example. Right. Um, and... As four to five wounds, not going to kill him, but it does mean that next turn, like one lightning bolt can actually kill him, or a single charge can. Um, and he doesn't have any heal on that side, hit, uh, beside, unless the green lady goes over. Um, Ed does have some heal, but not very much, especially compared to three unicorns. Yeah. Um, if, if Sam wants to play this slow and just pepper him, he could. Yeah. And it looks like Ed is is really all advancing in the center. Um, I think it'd be wise, wouldn't it, to back off in the center just out of charge, just to make sure, and then push really hard through on the right. Just really make it happen on the right-hand side. Um, I mean, if, if, if this was a, uh, if, if I was playing Sam's list, I would essentially just back up. I would leave the, the Horde of Knights right there because that four shambler is in position to charge, but there's nothing behind it to do anything afterwards. Mm. Um, so if I would just take the four shambler charge on the counter charge, that board of night is going to kill him. Mm. Uh, and and then you know be prepared for the tree herder behind it. If he charges a four shambler without having a tree herder and those um, four sham shambler hordes right behind him, then he's kind of just wasted it. Yeah, he's relying on the uh, tree herder's durability and backing up a little bit. He's playing, he's playing a grind game, isn't he? He wants, he doesn't want to get first charged, and that's the the principle of what he's doing because he knows all that crush that that thunderous two is going to hurt him. Mm -hmm. He does have a token, um, but he only has the advantage as long as those Pegasus do not cross the board. Yep. Once those Pegasus cross the board, then it'll be four to three uh, until he crosses the board himself with his own tokens. Yep. Yeah. And the the blocking terrain there is gonna be in Sam's favor, I guess, right? Because his, his unicorn can kind of hide behind 
blocking terrain there on the right. Oh, there wow. Go, go ahead and charge. Okay. Okay. Uh, How far away is the, uh, the Shamblers behind the tree herder uh, from, from there? Could, could he back up? One at the bottom. Yeah, that one. That one. Either one nope. of them. Nope, he won't be able to back up. So that night horde is going to be triple charged next turn. That's, oh, no, um, is he actually charging? Yep. I think he's, he's seeing. What, I think he's seeing what he can do after he kills them. Is yeah. he using the night horde as chaff? That's 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 spunky. I like that. To be fair, Sam did say to me beforehand. Um, He's he's basically he's one strategy. He's going to march across the board and he's going to smash face and then see what happens. That's his whole <laughs> game plan right now, right? He's just going for a massive. I'm going to smash you in the face. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, Alpha strike against uh, Lord of Woods. Ugh. I mean, if the knights survive, he's got enough heal back there to at least get some of the wounds back on them. And then he's got things from both sides to come in and flank it. It's 54 attacks. Uh, yeah. On fours with elite, and then he's, on fours. He's going to, it's not even a, a double charge. He's going to get a quadruple, maybe quintuplet charge. Between, <laughs> yeah, he can get, he can get both these guys both in. Farthers, the the, the force warden, and both fours. I mean, I, you I'm, go, girl, but seriously, what the hell? Okay, he's thinking about it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would have been a really oh. short game. <laughs> or not. Um, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> what well, well, is deciding... this unit of knights? Yeah, some, okay. What's going to be my chef? Like you say, Patrick, though, dealing with that That's... regiment seems to be why a why moment, right? He seems to be fixated on, I'm going to kill it. Yeah, he, he can oh. just sit back, and if he charges with him, so what? Um, like, he should, like, he has the speed that he can spend two turns sitting back and just shooting um, while his flankers kind of go around. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got him outgunned and outrun. He doesn't need to force a first turn confrontation. Especially when it's pushed, like, all you gotta do is walk over the line at the very end and get, mm -hmm. get two points. So I just did the math uh, just for fun. If the four, two four shamblers and a wolf father and tree herder all charged in, they would average 21 wounds, which is only barely enough to put that night regiment, night horde, onto double ones. It is enough, but it's only barely enough. Yeah. That's a that's pretty impressive considering that's four units and probably what like eight hundred points worth of stuff. Yeah, eight hundred points and a four hundred points worth of knights. Um, so it looks like he has left those those knights in there as the charge, and has gone on to move some other things. Okay. We're gathering up our unicorn stall, lightning bolt, something today. Yeah. So which oh, knights is that? Is that the naked one or the one with Strider? That's that's the naked one. I'm pretty sure. The Strider yeah. one. Uh, that's sharpness, and that one's Strider. The CFB Strider chain is this? Nope. No nope. bench anywhere. So those knights actually have a very good chance of bouncing against a Shambler regiment when they're hindered. Yeah. They're Four only gonna, yeah, they're only going to average five wounds, and uh, that's a pretty tall order to uh, beat Dash 14. I feel like of all of his options, that's actually one the, probably one of the worst ones. Because uh, it means you essentially give up a piece and don't kill the piece in return. Oh, I just remember Jeremy Duvall shouted at me for not wearing a counter charge t shirt last time. Hang on, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Is he going to change in front of the camera? No, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, how, how, how desperate are you for ratings, Mike? <laughs> I don't know. The viewers might plummet. We'll see. <laughs> or, or, or someone should go post on like fanatics right now. Like Steve Hilder is doing a strip tease on Dash Twenty Eight Live. Everybody jump on real quick. We'll yeah. see what happens. Steve's resampling the vodka again. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So what do we have? There? Yeah, I can't. I can't blame him for for wanting to go grab some team colors though. I I uh, I don't have enough Dash Twenty Eight shirts. To, Are there to Dash Twenty Eight shirts? Uh, I had some made once, like a, a year ago, but it was just like one batch. But I I need to get around to like putting up an actual thing for people to order shirts if they if they want them. I need a better logo first. I keep saying I need a better logo, and then I'll get some real swag. I don't have a cool like blaster mascot image that I can use yet. I need somebody to make one. So if anybody out there is bored, uh, <laughs> locked in their house and can draw, <clears throat> I have a zombie themed Kings of War uh, website that could use a better logo. <laughs> Speaking oh. of blaster, <laughs> okay, screenshot that for Jeremy and then and then take it off. Yeah. They're, they're making very um, crude comments about you, Steve, on the on the chat. I do actually have some counter charge uh, underwear. I which was... <laughs> <laughs> so, when I was uh, going through the bet with Nick to wear hot pants, I had some some printed, but the only ones you didn't have printed <laughs> are, are like they're like women's maxi pants, and when they came and it, and it says. <laughs> On the back it says charge me and on the front it says <laughs> it has a little counter charge like it and i put them on and they were so obscene i was like i don't, I don't even me and i have no shame i'm like yeah um, there's probably a little bit much probably a little bit much that's how the boys that counter charge like to roll <laughs> oh yeah i got my wife to put them on once and she's like that no yeah oh uh, too much information Right, once I was on his birthday. Well. <laughs> 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 yes, Felix. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't wonder where that was going. <laughs> I think I need to get more alcohol before I continue on this. <laughs> so, where are we with the game? So the, I, uh, the I, game. Think he's, Sorry. I think he's uh, measuring what his ranges with his unicorns are because he's playing yeah. on lightning bolting something the but unicorn lightning bolt. yeah the unicorn lightning bolt lightning bolt battery is all lined up there yeah Pachow, Pachow. i really Pretty think enough. i really wish sam uh, ed had a flyer in his list because that would be just great to just chain uh, through boing. the way he, oh <laughs> doing, 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 it would be amazing yep unfortunately all his stuff has roots can't go anywhere <laughs> I guess except the elf cavalry and the dogs or cats, cats or whatever. The cats those can are. go pretty quick and they go vicious. Cats can go pretty quick. And they have vicious in melee, yeah. Wild Girt Panthers are pretty good. Speed 10, 85 points. The that is a Forest Warden vicious. right behind, right? Uh, Forest Warden here right behind it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Forest Warden, Avatar the Green Lady, Free Herder with Vicious, mm -hmm. and Little Fathers over here. On the What's your thoughts? Right. Um, Patrick on the on the avatar of the Green Lady in this edition, it, I, she feels overcosted to me. It's like I Before, just can't bring myself to take her in a list. So for any one of her abilities, she's overcosted. She is, uh, hey. especially when you compare her to the Unicorn and Forces of Nature. Um, yeah. So in Forces of Nature, I want to take her because um, you have unicorns. Um, and speaking and of the Green Lady, I think she's about to get triple lightning bolted. Oh wow, he's lightning bolting <laughs> the Green Lady. Okay. And she's only 13.15, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. I guess if they're playing for the favor of the lady, you know, the first thing you do is you, you blow the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the impersonator and the other army off the table. He's role-playing. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> the elf in green face. The elf in green face, yeah, exactly. That's who's playing it's Hit. Lightning bolt doesn't care about individual. It does not. Yeah. Now here's the thing with UB dice, right? Six, six. I never. If you have multiple attacks, I never roll them all together because it's it's so swingy. You would always roll six 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 in separates because it takes out mm -hmm. someone that's been swinging this. I, I find yeah. person. That's, uh, that's very fair. Like, cause then one if one set of dice is swingy, then potentially the other one will bounce back out. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that was six six wounds with lightning bolts on the avatar of the green lady, but only a three rolled for nerve, so she is fine. She could have needed a, a would have needed what like a s uh, no, 
15, uh, 13, 15. So, seven, yeah, minutes. seven to waiver. Seven just to waiver, yeah. He wouldn't have killed the regiment anyway, so. Okay, so 10 attacks, uh, six damage. Six damage from the knights on the tree herders in the forest. Oh, and the snake eyes. Oh, the one. Um, where's, the where's the button? Where's the button? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Pass to come. Proof his head up so you can see him on the top. Six damage. Uh, but yeah, going back to Green Lady, uh, if you're using her just as a heal bot, I do not think she is worth it. If you really have to play into her balance um, role, uh, switching between Radiance of Life and Cloak of Death, and of that, Cloak of Death is the better of those two roles. Right. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I think Sylvan can actually have uh, the best use of her. Because they can really play not not a tree list, which is what most people want to do something kill with, but uh, they can play a, a really good shooting list, especially with Master Hunters and um, and Silver Reef's Cap and all that. Um, so I mean, if I was gonna really take advantage of the uh, Green Lady, I'd play uh, her in a Silverkin list where Master Hunter is the Eric Nelson Nielsen person, um, and and all those type of units. Um, that way you can do one point of damage to a bunch of different things and pick them off. But he's already got both Radiance of Life and Cloak of Death in his list. He's doubling but up. The list. It doesn't double up. Yeah, but the cloak, uh, both of those are slow. Um, now, again, like in, in this list where everything is centered anyway, the lady probably isn't as good as, like, say, an Archmage with a uh, full shot of the Saint, right. um, who is much cheaper. Um. But in a, in, essentially, I think that the Green Lady is good is better in a uh, in a list that wants to spread out more and wants to do some shooting damage to pick some pick some unit up, units up. Um, she can go with a Tree Herder and a Wolf Father, but she probably wants it's better with actual elves. Right. I agree. All okay, right, so, so we've got, like got double charge going on here. Yep. So, so if you're Ed, do you like take the bait? Um, on that that night horde that charges in the center of the table in the woods there and send like three or four units in to wipe it out or are you trying to just hold it in place with that regiment for another turn? Like, right. Why wouldn't you? I say you go to that because it looks like the the guys with the tokens can see him, and then the two uh, the tree herders can see him. If you charge all all three of them, which with that one twenty five millimeter frontage base. Uh, you can you couldn't charge her through all three, but you could charge the four shamblers and two of those units. And then whoever wins, you you stagger your line so that it's harder for for Sam to uh, multi charge more. Yep. And everything over here is in the front, so if he wanted to try to get into a flank, he would need to surge something. Mm -hmm. He does have the surge to do it, um, yep. but it does mean not using his. Uh, Dropping those tokens and not using his tree herders in combat. Yeah, yeah, because he would have to walk this unit forward and turn them a bit. Mm -hmm. well, I guess get the other guys out of the way. At what point are we going to reference uh, Patrick's smashing victory against the UK <laughs> master Tom Robinson? And uh, is Tom watching? Can we see who's watching? I don't think we can see who's watching. I don't know if we can. Um. I think if you might be able to see if you go over to YouTube, but I'm not sure. I'm on, I'm on YouTube. There's this thing called privacy that people are really big on with Google products, so I don't know. Yeah, only Google can uh, invade your privacy. Yeah, only Google gets to do that. And Facebook, right? No, that was a. Uh, no, was not a Facebook. Never match. Facebook. What are you talking about? Shut up. <laughs> 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 definitely made me happy because last time I played him to the UK and. I didn't know who Tom Robinson was at the time. I was like, hey, I'll be at Nancy Gate to say who wants to play. He's like, oh, I'll play. Um, and my wife and I were actually running late to HQ, and he kindly offered us a ride from the Games Workshop headquarters. So we went from Games Workshop straight to Mantic. Nice. Uh, and he played, and um, I, uh, I was playing a very similar list to list to mine. Uh, oh, look, he's charging the four shamblers in and the tree herder, so triple charge. Nice. Yep. Um, but yeah, anyway, he, uh, 
I uh, I lost Lady and Lona to an organ gun who did four wounds and enrolled double box cars. Yeah. Ooh. So I don't feel too bad about his night board not killing my soul reavers. <laughs> <laughs> you can live really with that. Though. You can live with that. It was a good game. That is a cold level of revenge. On a, on a, <laughs> you held that tight in your heart for a long time. It's been three years, and revenge has been so <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ed has gone for a double charge against uh, some water elementals on the hill over here on the right, and he has gone for the triple charge against the uh, Redemption Knights with no item that charged his uh, four shamblers in the woods last turn. Um is that He's enough? not going to kill That's... his elementals, right? He's going to be like 15 hits. They're not going to die unless he rolls really well. Yeah. The order of redemption is not going to die? No, the water elementals. The water elementals. Oh, yeah. They they shouldn't. Um, he could move, move the bolt farther up to potentially get a elite on both of those. Yeah, I think he probably will. But I'm just thinking what the play is there because, I mean, there's no surge that's available there, I think. No, even with Willfather, he's looking at only 78 wounds, and uh, is, it, is the Four Shambler Regiment offering mm. a flank without any surge? Uh, let's see. Like, does he even need to surge there? Uh, it looks like... If he, just, if he rotates like and moves forward, I think he'll be able to get the water elementals into the flank. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he does need to actually burn a surge to do that, which will save my lightning bolt at least. Mm. Yep. Six. Right. So um, six no, because it's boomstick. So it's the boomstick. It gives him. What's the base lightning bolt on a unicorn? Uh, five. It's five. Right. So five. the total darkness one would uh. It's only five lightning bolts, so okay. if, if he uses surge, he, he gives up five. Got it. Um, and it looks like he did walk the Wilt Father up enough to get Cloak of Death on these Redemption Knights in the center. And it's uh, the horn gives elite to both of them because of the nine inches, right? So he's thinking about where to put it. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's going to try and get nine, the nine inches across all. Because he should be able to get um, all of them in elite range and still be able to do Cliff of Death. Uh, but it does look like he's going to leave out that last four Shanto regiment from there. Wow, so nine attacks in it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not a big deal. I mean, the thing is, you know, Sam has a lot of lightning bolts and a lot of heal, but he can't be doing both at once. Every time you force him to heal, it means you're not getting uh, getting shot in the face. So it looks like Ed has shuffled his tokens around uh, and now has all the moves so far. Well, yeah. Uh, That's a pretty speedy forest warden to move that far. I don't know if he realized that because uh, he already had a loot token on him, which would mean that he does not have nimble anymore. Yeah, he may have forgotten that. So, yeah, because he didn't move under 10 inches, which is, uh, you know, move tokens uh, decrease his speed 5. Yep. And they also lose nimble, so it means he would, unless he was already facing that way. Uh, he might have turned it last turn. We might not have seen him do the turn last turn. He was yeah. he, he, he was turning kind of a funny direction, but I wasn't sure which way he was facing. I thought he was facing kind of up the board, but he could have turned the other way. So, so, so I guess what happened there is the... Is these these four shamblers that charged in from back here that were carrying both tokens dropped them, then yeah. charged, and then this forest warden who had picked up the token in the center last turn ran over to where the the shamblers dropped them and picked them up. Yeah, and now has all three and is behind a little wall of a wilt father mm -hmm. and some girth panthers. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I've never seen girth panthers used like this before. Normally they're just thrown in front of stuff as chaff, right? But he's using them here to try and pick up the. The winged guys with the tokens, isn't he? He's going to try and um, get off around that corner so that that. Uh, oh, that's that back, uh, Girl Panther? Back. Yeah, yeah, so the Pegasus isn't can't that? just sneak down the edge. He's got speed 10 units that can pick him up. He, he hasn't moved him yet, but that's I think that is a smarter play to turn him roughly 90 degrees so that the Pegasus can't get around that rock. Mm. I 
and theory, if if those knights die, and all three shambler units back up, the knight horde can't see them. Yeah, in which case, just wasted a unit of redemption for do for nothing. Yeah, um, I mean, I would definitely roll the uh, the four shamblers and, and the tree herder first, because if you don't get enough to get out of the uh, out of the um, forest, you're you're going to want to move the four shamblers up to protect them. Right. No, or the regiment up. Yeah, the regiment. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I would roll the uh, the tree herder first because uh, if you get a one, you, you're not going to want to move the horde because a a knight horde with rogue strength is something that can kill tree herder in one go. Um, yeah. And if if you get say like a three on the tree herder, then you can go in and back up the four shambles and try to get out as well. Uh, but if you only get a one, you're probably going to want to keep that horde where it is. And, um. So I, I think uh, you you want to protect the uh, the tree herder over uh, even a horde of four shamblers. Has he forgotten to do the radiance of life on his uh, shamblers? Looks like no, he yeah, did it. Uh, they had six before. Yeah, he did it. Oh, they did. Okay, yeah, six wins. Yep. I don't know if he's still, not going to count uh, him. Uh, Avatar yet, so we haven't seen the regen. John, your fans will be disappointed that your glaring overhead light has gone. <laughs> Given that uh, reflective glare they're so fond of. Croja right now is crying. He's like, where's, where's the light of God? It literally was. Well, it's it's my, uh, my screen goes straight into the uh, into the garden. It was sunlight that was causing a problem. Uh, sunlight. <laughs> Who likes that? I know, I know we don't get it very often in the UK, but that was the... Are that you was joking? It. It's boiling. It is oh, a little warm. It's a little warm. Today. It's like winter in California. You know, it's uh... <laughs> light jacket weather. Oh, <sighs> it was it's pushing it. It's pushing eighties today, Mike. Oh, wow. it's uh, ninety-three degrees here in Austin. Yeah, well, that's oh, Texas. You always have to be better in Texas. <laughs> better in Texas. We're hotter sure. than you are, and also colder. <laughs> I remember uh, reading an article about how like dozens of people passed out in the London Marathon at the balmy weather of 78 degrees. I don't even know what that is. What's 78 degrees Fahrenheit and centigrade? Uh, 26. 25. 78 degrees uh, freedom units, you mean? <laughs> in real money. Uh, I, was in, I was in Toronto uh during the summer, a long time ago, and uh, they were having the Canadian version of a heat wave. And I remember watching the news and seeing footage of Canadian police officers out on the street handing out water bottles to <laughs> citizens as they walked by them. And I'm looking at them, I'm like, it's 85 degrees outside, it's not that hot, but they're Canadian. So they're wearing long sleeve flannel and jeans because that's all the clothing they have. They don't have jeans <laughs> or t-shirts. I'm like, no wonder you're sweating. At least, like, make some cutoffs or something, man. Come on. <laughs> They're not going to be a fashion The only disaster. shorts on. Canadians have is when they come down to, during Texas winter. Then they have shorts. Right. They, and they buy them there. <laughs> you sell them in the gift shop. <laughs> what's what's yeah. going on? Sorry, uh, we've missed something. Uh, uh, oh! He's, he's, he's moved on to shooting. Oh. So, so I think the green lady uh, healed Heal. herself. Uh, yeah. She got a good regen roll down to two wounds now. Yep. Oh, that's All right, now idea. moving on to combat. So we'll see which one he's doing first. Looks like he might be doing the. Uh, doing the big one in the middle. Big one in the middle first, yeah. Wait, did the green lady heal herself? Yeah. I think she cast heal on herself. Oh, can you, you do that? Now? To... Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Now, yeah, version that three. Is something I completely missed in third edition. Yeah, self is self is a uh, valid target for heal now. Okay, all shambles together. Never uh, did together not get either the elite rolls. Um, only two wounds, eight wounds. Uh, that plus the uh, tree herder should be enough. Yeah, especially yeah. if you include the uh, the cloak of death. Yeah, so that puts them all the way up to what nine, and they're fifteen, seventeen. And yeah. there comes the tree herder. Five hits. Picks up one more with the lead. So it is interesting. His decision uh, or Sam's decision to shoot the 
Green Lady does make it so that Ed could not play her aggressively. Um, because he already has Cloak of Death and Radiance of Life there. So if he was if she wasn't wounded, he could have just flown her behind him and uh, and started doing wounds on those knights that would have to be then healed. Yep. And he does pick them up with a seven for nerve and then another then a ten on the reroll. Ooh. And the knights uh, of course right inspire the themselves. They have all the rules. All the rules. They do have a ridiculous amount of rules. Right. Looks like well, we're probably gonna walk the. Oh, good roll! Three Nine inches. Four. Has got them all out. There you go. That's fantastic. That's exactly what you needed. Yep. Yeah. Um, right, two the... inches, but still either way enough for him to get out. Uh, so now that he knows his tree herder is out of the forest. You can play more defensively. Yeah. Does, yeah, it does look like those port, that horde is not going to be able to get in. No. Oh, yeah, That's look at the way he's positioned that he's blocked himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think he was trying to get close enough to give all give, uh, both units. He had plenty of room. Uh, I think he was trying to uh, close the deck, though. He was trying to make sure he gets. Yeah. But even then, the, the Green Lady could have given that. Exactly. Yeah. So over here, uh, he's now rolling. Is, is that he's just left those two there? That's interesting. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Converted both of the uh, elite rolls for 12 hits, which is uh, nearly three status. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, only four wounds, though, so it, it came back down. There you go. Uh, unless, the unless the regiment does really good. Uh, those water elements. Yeah, well, no, instead. three hits. Yeah, no, they are dash 17 and inspired by the unicorns. Oof. So six total wounds would need 11 twice. Uh, that's a pretty yeah. tall order. Yeah, and there's a five. Uh -huh. Oh, but they're fine. Um, depending on a regen roll, he might not even bother casting heal on him. Uh, yeah, that's true. Good. Now, if you're Sam, uh, Sam, though, do you double charge the regiment to make or, or try to search into a flank of the regiment to try to make sure you pick up a unit? Or do you split your attacks out? I would take that surge out. Yeah, I'd surge into the flank. It's interesting because the strength of Ed's deployment was in his layering, and what mm -hmm. he's he's actually given up a lot of his layering to make this multi pronged attack. Yeah. yeah. So when the Night Horde goes in, they're no longer at risk of being quadruple charged as much. Particularly if he puts the Redemption Knights into the Shambler Regiment, then his horde is shifted along, mm -hmm. yeah. and and they they could well survive. Um, the charge from the Shamda unit. So it feels like he's given up some of his uh, strength. He's still got the three tokens, so hey. And still also, got the three tokens, but now they are tied because Pegasus just crossed the board edge. Um, so now that one token Pegasus is holding to two. And Ed didn't do what we thought he was going to do, which was to turn the Panthers and move them across the woods, which would have stopped him. No. Yeah. That, that Pegasus uh, has nothing to keep him from moving another further 10 and just sitting in the back here scoring two points. No, yep. Panthers can still turn, I guess. You, you need to turn Panthers now. I mean, the, the, the Pegasus now is committed to going down that channel. If that Pegasus is already past the, the 24 inch mark, uh, you can just sit there, honestly. Like, because if, the if the Panthers turn right, they're going to be in his flank, not his front. And they can't so charge, yeah. yeah. Oh. No, they're checking that right now. Uh, I am. That's me. Oh. If I can, he's, if I can he's interfering. Sorry. Uh, that is... Yes, the back is 21.8 inches from the board edge. So I would really like to hear their uh, score channel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's moving that? Are you moving that? Yeah, <laughs> I'm moving that. <laughs> it's so polite. He'd be, he'd be fine. No, it looks like that was the regen roll on the uh, water elementals. Yeah, no, he's doing oh, he's thinking about. Oh, he's uh, he's just front charging. Just he's front willing charges. to work the grind on the on that side. He'll win. Hmm. That's why. Yeah, he will. Um, and that that back horse shambler horde cannot see. Actually, you can see the uh, horse shamblers yep. on the hill. Yep. So he could multi charge over there, but that is a fresh unit. 
He can't uh, multi-charge, yeah. can he? Well, he can only multi-charge if... Because the Shamblers don't fit, right? They're the same base size. So you can only get one in. With this, so the only, the only way he can multi-charge <laughs> is if the horde that's uh, on the left backs up and sidesteps. And then he can multi-charge the body uh, elements on a hill, yeah. which would then allow him to surge with his Forest Warden, who is now just being a token character. He can surge just one inch and get back into the uh, the front of the wounded water elementals. But that's why he would multi-charge. Former US Master Patrick Zara Allen there with the <laughs> Surge is a, it's so powerful, isn't it, Surge? It's just, it's, it's, it's powerful, powerful in, um, in certain situations. And that, that is one, one of the biggest reasons I think every Shambling unit should only be a max and melee force because of how powerful it could be. Um, like Whites and Eternal Guardian, I'm not a huge fan of them being melee three, honestly. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, though, I'm not a huge fan of non-Shambling units being fearless. But that's a grand game design thing. Ooh, someone should apply to be on the rules <laughs> committee and cause some trouble. Yeah, it is kind of a weird thing, right? To say that a unit is shambling and can't move as fast as other units and yet can still hit like an elite melee unit. Mm -hmm. I will say in a lot of different unit sizes, shambling is more of a, of a bane than it is a boom. Um, See, so we go. Here we go, the knights. Here come the knights. Here come the knights. Here come the charging knights. into the woods. Knights. All right, so they sh that, that night horse should kill that horde, uh, barring we really weird UB dice. Um, I'm assuming he's going to charge the other horde into oh. the, uh, the second back. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's going to charge the redemption first. Knights in first. Come on. That's what you need yeah, to do. Slide him, slide him over more. Yep. Oh, uh, the chat's given you a new name, Patrick. It's uh, Patrick Zora Kings. Slayer of Northern Kings. <laughs> 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 All right, so that is going to be the Order of Redemption with Sharpness. So uh, charging in on a hindered charge there, they will just go back to hitting on threes oh, and lose what, forest. one thunders. Yeah, yeah, threes and fours. And they already have five wounds, so... Should it be, uh, I mean... Even without UB dice, hitting on fours is always scary, but that should still be a, a pickup. Yeah. Okay, so on the left here, he's given his Order of Redemption Knights. Uh, he's setting up to be charged by Silver Breeze off a hill. What do you yep. all think about that move? I'm not sure I understand why he's doing that. It's awfully early in the game to, to sacrifice them as a screen for this other Pegasus with the token to, to like sneak by them. Um, yeah, threes and twos is going to make an awful mess of them. I mean, you're, yeah, you're looking at an average of 10 to 11 wounds yeah. with weight um, and crush uh, with under three. Yeah, and they have fire oil. Actually, the, the hill doesn't matter with fire oil, actually. Oh, good point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll get it anyway. I really like Stormwind in the Sylvan King list. I think not enough people realize because they kind of feel like the. I remember in version two, everyone was like, oh, Stormwind, <laughs> they're not that good, blah, blah, blah. A couple of units of Stormwind in the Sylvan King list make a really nice hammer to the anvil you can get with Shamblers. Yeah, so the downside is they're, they're regular. So if you do want to do a lot of uh, heroes, you're kind of limited there. Um, Stormwind, people were down on Stormwind in second edition because Dragons were so much better, for like 30 points more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dragons losing nip Nimble, I think, makes it more of an even trade. Steve, you barely mentioned that you beat Adam Paddley. It's something you, didn't, you never talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Adam holds grudges and is quite a scary guy. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a scary guy, and his use of spelling is even scarier. So, <laughs> I, I, I was downstairs choosing t-shirts, and this t-shirt was right next to the one that says, I tabled Adam Paddy, and I was like, do I want to go there again? But they're already being horrible to me all the time online, so I'm like, oh, maybe I should just like not 
You, you know, should wait until the next time we stream a game of Adams, and then wear it. <laughs> I mean, I well, think that, if you stream a game of Adams, it's not that hard to beat him. What's the problem? Come on, <laughs> like that. That was him. It was very it was a very long time ago. B, he was playing a terrible list, uh, and C, he wasn't really concentrating. So, I still take it though. Also, well, I haven't won for quite a long time at the moment, so <laughs> I need to tone it back. <laughs> All right, we've moved on to shooting, and it looks like he might be sending all the lightning bolts against all the eggs in one basket there. The uh, Forest well, Warden. Oh, he's going to Forest touches. Warden. Okay. Yeah. Which I guess I makes guess. sense, right? If he if he gets lucky and makes him drop all three tokens, that, that kind of... He's only done one of them. That's, that was the boomstick. Yeah. And he, what's the two ones he rolled? Is he? Oh, oh no, because uh, he has cover, so. Fives. Oh, so he missed yeah. and did no damage. Good, good skills. He say he's worked it out. Do, do five yeah. at a time. He's doing them on the on the cats. Yeah. Oh, it's a yeah. smart thing because if, if you get lucky with the first five, you can shoot at the back five. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because the Panthers are only 9-11. Steve, what is, is it what ethically is it? acceptable to uh, cheer on an Australian versus uh, an English person in, in any sport, including things of war? I, I believe we're all one world, my friend. I was raised on uh, Star Trek. It's, it's one world peace with the Federation. So <laughs> you can cheer whoever you like, mate. As long as it's not the Klingons, I don't mind. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like three wounds from the first lightning bolt on the Gur Panthers. Would it have been better to shoot the boomstick at the Panthers just to make sure you get rid of them with one shot and then shoot everything else at the... I have a feeling he shot with the boomstick at the forest board to see if he got lucky. Mm -hmm. And if he did, then he would have focused the other two at him. Sure, sure, sure. But since he came up pretty much empty. Uh, Bob Aspen is from uh, South Africa. Did you not know that? I didn't no, know that. No. Well-traveled man. I don't think I even saw that in the uh, in the Northern Kings breakdown that we had a South African player. Or is a uh, he's not? North, oh my God! Don't are, are talk. Are you called arms? Oh, don't call Bob Asplund a member of Northern Kings. He's going to come and find you, mate. No, 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 I was saying in the Northern <laughs> Kings like stats, like of oh, the testaments. Oh, yes. oh yeah. no, yeah. I yeah. He's naturalized now. We've. Uh, He's the most no <laughs> He's more and Lancashire a than Janet, and Jan's actually from Lancashire. Uh, so that will pick up the Gur Panthers with a <laughs> six for the mid roll and then an eight on the re roll. Oh, sorry, the game. <laughs> oh, the Gur Panthers are dead. Yep. Two lightning bolts. Nice. That was all good. They can take. Uh, now moving on to combat. Looks like he's going to start with the water elementals on the hill. Against the Forest Shambler Regiment first. Steve, Bob's just asked what? me if I, if I know your address. I'm saying <laughs> it's not, it wasn't me, <laughs> Bob. It was Patrick. <laughs> he's a big man. He's like six foot five. Ooh. And that was an eleven for the nerve roll. Whoa! On the, uh, regiment picking them oh, up wow. after doing six Oof. wounds. Ooh. There you go, Steve. Water elemental is just so good. Broken. Should be nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Get rid totally of missed that. Uh, he only did uh, three wounds. Effect. He did three wounds and because uh, he he uh, wounds on a uh, horse. Oh, you're right. And he got exactly. Oh no! Isn't he charging? Is he charging off the hill? Oh he yeah. Charging the hill and they're not. Yeah, he's charging off the hill, so he should have done six. Yep. Six yeah. wounds. Checking to see if he sidesteps, if he'll be uh, out. That flank's not looking good, Fred. I've got to be honest now. It, uh, it looks like it's honestly going to be more just delaying. I, I don't see either one of them breaking through very quickly on that on that flank. In the uh, yeah, well, so hmm, I guess I guess Ed could double charge the unit that's already wounded, as long as his shambles don't die. Yeah. And then he'd be then he'd be able to avoid the flank surge he's uh, that's being threatened now. Yeah. 
So you can only double charge with the Gur Panthers. You can't do it with the four shambles without surge, at least. Why not? Oh, damage shouldn't be enough. Because he's in a flank, and there's not enough space to pick up to place in the flank. Sorry, I meant the one that's the one on the left. So yeah, yeah, it's oh, not about charging yes. that one. Yeah, they're already wounded. Yeah. So you know, two hordes into that will is more likely to to take them off, and then he's avoiding the the, the flank that's being threatened in the next. Yes. It does look like that back horde can see him, probably barely, but I think so. Okay, the regiment's gone. All right. Yep, the sharpness redemption knights did. More than enough wounds. Really five five wound. wounds to the unit that already had five and picked them up with double eights for nerve rolls. Mm. What do we so do here? Sidestep point. to give the horde room for to reform, probably? Either yeah. sidestep uh, or you go forward to con try to control uh, multi charges. Yeah. If he sidesteps too far, he's going to get a tree herder in the flank, right? Oh, then he rolled a one. Looks like he rolled a one, but he That's might. It. Let's see. Nope, still in the front. Oh. Yeah, that would have been close if you rolled a two, though. That's pretty, pretty ballsy there. <clears throat> if you'd rolled a three, it would have been just gross. So that is. Oh. Yeah. And now the night horror. Is that a night, is that four chamber regiment in range of the uh, redemption on the left? Which one? Oh, uh, the, the one that's in the reserve. Wow. Okay, outside of twelve inches, so. It's only the uh, silver uh, storm wind deck charge. So they yeah, did how many wounds? 18 like hits over 32. And then 12, 12 wounds. 12 wounds. Oh, yeah. 12 wounds. Right, Pathfinder. Yep. Oh, some Bruce strength up in there as well. Jesus. Yeah, Bruce strength is Pathfinder. One of the most expensive units in the game you can create at 400 points, but it yep. does do work. Yep. As long as you actually get charges against. Valuable stuff. And this yeah. map, they just, I assume they randomed it. One wall. There's one wall in this all Pathfinder game. When <laughs> it's, it's nowhere near where anyone is actually playing. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, that's very this, intentional, though. Well, so, this is it's like nowhere near. This is supposed to be a Epic Dwarf random map 15, and there are two walls on it, but one of them is missing. There's supposed to be a wall on the deployment zone line up, up here uh, in the left. By the lake, kind of, kind of, okay. in between, actually, in between the the impassable and the forest, there in the middle, along the deployment zone line, and it is not on this UB map. So, so okay. we're saying that Sam did accidentally, accidentally deleted it halfway. Yeah. Not against. Let's say mission not against. So this is why I still think that rather than having these two huge forests, you have three to four smaller ones. Because that way, even with Pathfinder, those forests matter because they block more line of sight. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the well, bigger forest. This is uh, what uh, Fred was saying about having double woods, so the woods are actually counted as you have a slight split in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can go tippy toe in one, but you still can't see through the other side. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've been toying around with making uh, fields height two, and adding another one of those. I really like that um, having variable heights of like between anywhere between one and like um, like four, yeah. so that different things can see over it. Yeah, yeah. Because because that blocks line of sight. Actually, have to remember that that's a thing. Right, because because that blocks off uh, infantry from being shot at by war machines if they can get in between them. If you go go um, on the giant dwarf uh, YouTube channel, there's a battle that Fred played against Lars, I think. Where they had nine walls and they had walls on hills, walls around <laughs> fields, they had walls everywhere. They're like, we like walls, and I'm like, yeah, actually, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Take some of the the fear of hitting on threes out of the game. I, uh, so a lot of people, I, I built this giant, massive hill for a uh, a tournament uh, that I call the Fist of the First Men, and other people called the Giant Cow Patty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it was just big, twenty-four inch uh, diameter hill that had three uh, obstacles built onto it, and I usually put a typical uh, either forest or, or water on the top. And in in, uh, in the Austin tournament before it uh, before it skipped a year, uh, now two with uh, COVID, but it uh, it sat right in the middle. So it, it was essentially if you played dominate, all you had to do was stay on that hill. Stay on the hill. 
uh, but yeah, it, I, I like having giant like hills with uh, with like other features on top of it, and I think so stuff like that in general is interesting to me. So this yeah. is interesting. Rather than do the double charge onto the water elementals to gain the hold on the right hand flank, he's almost mm -hmm. given up the right hand flank and he's going all in to try and smash those knights. I mean, he fi I guess he figures if he takes out the knights, then a lot of Sam's units is kind of neutered. Um, so he's done four with that. Well, if he if he makes a hole in the middle and runs the uh, the forest warden holding all the tokens over the line and can hold off the water elementals long enough to just get away, then he'll end up with mm -hmm. six points to four. He's not, he's not going to... I mean, those... Hmm. I don't know that it's a great plan, but maybe that's what he's trying to do. I would well, be very surprised if those forest shamblers killed the water elementals on the right. They probably will not. Uh, oh, gosh. You're looking at, like, four to five wounds. Uh, he would have to get lucky on a nerve roll to kill him. Here come the storm wind. Hey. Over the hill. Yep. Three yeah. centuries on the right. Hey. That's going to make a mess. So, 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 do we think this triple charge against the knights is, is actually going to work? Is is that enough punch to take out a horde of knights? Nope. We've got a tree herder with vicious, the wilt father, and a forest champion. They're, they're looking at, a, at roughly sixteen wounds uh, at, at average, so seventeen wounds to drain life. Um, that requires a six to break, which is not great. Six twice is a 53. I, I was watching Paige Neo's videos. Paige is somewhere with a calculator telling me. He's not, I mean, it's just in his head. He doesn't need a calculator. <laughs> Seven twice is 35%. Six twice is 53 Something like that, anyway. I just watched uh, one of his battle reports for the first time. I actually really like the statistics he does. They're so good, right? He's. A math genius, the guy's brilliant. Yeah. He does it live in game. He's like, yeah. you can hear him. He's going, if I charge in this one, it is fifty-three percent and three point seven <laughs> wounds. You know that? It's what? What? I can't even count. This isn't a problem. <laughs> We're actually going to have Paige uh, playing on a live stream game this Friday against Keith Randall. Um, yeah. Ooh. It's uh, going to be a little late. It's it's uh, starting at ten thirty Eastern time, seven thirty Pacific, so middle of the night in England. But uh, yeah. maybe that'll give you guys something to watch on Saturday morning. And we've just recorded a list builder studio with Paige as well. If I oh, nice. That guy's everywhere. He's a very, well, I, very good player. He is. I, I've, got a, I've got a universal battle tournament on uh, on Saturday. Ooh. Yeah, three games in a day. Uh, Bob's organizing for the Wish You Were Here event. Oh, uh, yeah. 1600, 1,600 point games, three of them in a day. So... Uh, I shall have uh, locked myself away in my office and uh, get it done. I get you it. see, I got three children. You've, you've got, you know. <laughs> Ooh, I, I'm I've sorry got two. For all this. I've got two. Let me just say for everybody who's out there with kids right now, um, y'all are uh, saints during all this uh, stay-at-home orders. But yeah, that, that seems that seems like a mess having having to do homeschooling and top of job and all that. I just uh, don't thankfully, do yeah, yeah. Thankfully, my my daughter, both my daughters' schools give uh, pretty good uh, amounts of work. Well, they get they give work out, and the girls get done all morning, and then they're free to do whatever they want in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, they're allowed to, they're allowed to come into my office uh, if they've cut themselves or the house on fire, and that's the only reason they're allowed in. <laughs> so uh, don't, dis don't disturb daddy; he's working. Working. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like he sent his other horde of forest shamblers in to block the redemption knights with sharpness to keep them off the horde of the tree herder. Or excuse me, so off, off the flank of the tree herder. How do you like that move compared to just having that horde also charge the knights? He considered it. That was his first thought, wasn't it? Because he moved originally to do a quad charge. I would have done a quad charge to kill that. Yeah. Absolutely make sure of killing that horde. Mm -hmm. I would as well. And it looks like he's he's moved his other unit of Gur Panthers kind of up here. I'm assuming to try to screen the Forest Warden, which he'll now move up as far as he can. He's also screening the flank of the Shamblers against that uh, unit on the hill. Yep. So which pretty, is well in, pretty good so. positioning for them, yeah. Um, of course, they, they they might just eat three lightning bolts next turn. Yep. And, and be gone. I think they will. But at that point, like, can you get the Forest Warden up here close enough that he can charge one of the unicorns? Next turn, that would be pretty cool. 
He's only moved in two, so no. That's weird. I do have so they can definitely stay out of charge range. Uh, yeah. Or fighting bolt. It's going to come if the uh, night horror survives, which they have a decent chance to. The other unicorns are probably be busy healing them. See, Forest Warden is only 11.13. It's a really odd choice to put the tokens on the 11.13 unit when you've got two dash 18, dash 19 units that are defense six. Mm -hmm. And only speed five or speed six. So you don't lose that much by having them carry it. Okay, so the uh, green lady is now completely healed. Yep. She's healed herself again. Yep. Has he has he made a regen roll on the green lady? Doesn't the avatar of the green lady have regen? He might be forgetting that. Yeah, she's supposed to have five up regen. I'm not sure that he's actually right. rolled a, a, a regen check. On I haven't head. seen it. Okay. So looks like he's probably moving on to combat now. Uh, it looks yeah, like he has had the green lady do a uh, cloak of death on the uh, on the order to redemption. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. So here you storm wind coming off the hill because that uh that makes the storm wind a lot more likely to actually kill those order. Um, and it's all up. That's all all at is a single. Pegasus. Converts converts three out of the four elite rerolls. Hey. Ten wounds. And does ten wounds. And we'll pick and them up. And they're very dead. Yeah. yeah. Everyone looks surprised. <laughs> God, no way. I was surprised that some did it, to be honest. But... Especially yeah. He uh, did it where there was nothing else to back him up. Yeah. Like, just, there, put, at at the very least, put them, in so that, put them in the field. So yeah. that it'd be a hindered charge. Hindered coming down, yeah. yeah. And, and you have J-Boots, so... You could be like, come and get me hindered, or I'm coming to get you unhindered next turn, right? Yeah. yeah. One or the other. Yeah, yeah weird. And now the Stormwinder over here is staring. Moves. Wow. And then now the yeah, Stormwinder over here is staring at this Pegasus. Yeah. Pegasus can just literally turn a very slight amount, and then it's unchargeable because of the, the great big rock sitting in the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's only going to protect him for, like, one turn, though. Mm. And, it, and it keeps him from crossing the, uh, the halfway line. Oh, oh, that's he's interesting. Five. He didn't mean no, he, to do that. No, he. Where has he gone for that? I mean, do you really care if the fact is he's charged with flank? That's six attacks with under one. No, you, actually, you, you encourage it to be honest. But yeah, yeah, that, I think he was trying to walk forward just enough to be in their front, so he could charge them next turn and just roll, you know, twice what he needed to. <laughs> can the fact is he can still fly? He can still fly, right? No, he's no not, well, if, if it drops the token, token, it can fly. You can't fly with a second. Right. No, yeah, you speed five, you lose nimble and fly. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like we're doing the shamblers on the uh, they are elite still, haven't they? From the will father. Yeah. 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 Yep, they're within six. Or I guess nine. He's got the horn. <laughs> he's got the horn. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Childish. My dear old thing. My dear old thing. Ouch. So you got eight, eight wounds, wounds, which is not bad. It's pretty good. That's been nine wounds, yeah. But he rolled a five, so. Redemption Knights are 15, 17. So a five, they're not even going to be One away. Then. One away. Yeah. No Thunderous now, so hey. They're not going to die on the counter charge. True. No, it's true. All right, Let's see if he can get lucky against these knights. He's going to need it. A couple of lead rerolls converts one. Looks like, or was that vicious? That's vicious. Right? That's vicious. Yeah. Yeah. Seven. One, we have seven hits. Yeah. And that's why Patrick is absolutely useless. Oh, oh, welcome back, Patrick. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right. So he didn't. Uh, he failed to even waver the redemption knights in the center. Ooh! And he's just working through the uh, night horde now. Yep. Those redemption knights shouldn't pick anything up, and there, there's no danger for uh, for any fork screws or anything right now. Nineteen damage. Nineteen wounds is pretty good. Oh, that's enough. Thank you. Should have done like 24. 14 to 15. That's enough, 25. Yep. 
Wow. So okay. Big. Well, we That's were wrong. A... Yeah, that worked out really well for him. Yeah. It's all going badly wrong for the Spanish. <laughs> I'm waiting for Bob to come up with some Trafalgar reference there. <laughs> Sam is half English, you know, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means that if he wins, it's the English side and he loses the Spanish side, right? right. <laughs> I'm just saying, Lewis, Sarah would never have made these. When Sam's watching this back, let me tell you, mate, Lewis would never have made this mistake. Just... <laughs> <laughs> On Nacho or any of them yet. Yeah, yeah but... well, no, Nacho probably would have. Yeah, it's fine. Would you reckon? I don't know. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> I've met them all. They're very nice. Uh, I, I played that show and it was, it was um, methodical. It was like playing Robinson. It was very much... Oh, boom, God. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, okay, oh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> That's the thing about, I guess, being in the, the UK or being in Europe and you guys have uh, visitors come. They're coming from other countries in the US. It's like, oh, they came all the way from out of region. They drove through one state to get here. Yeah, it's the <laughs> but, same. Same distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the Spanish like to do, they like to turn up and win our tournaments pretty regularly. They're very, very annoyingly good. It's yeah. like UK chess versus our American tournaments. Yeah, exactly. We come across the US and beat you. <laughs> so what we're saying is there's no such thing as, as home field advantage in Kings of War. It's better to be the away team. I feel like it's actually quite the opposite, especially... Yeah. Uh, it's meta. It's the meta. It's the, it's the meta. Yeah. meta. Yeah. yeah, you come from out of the meta. Throw everybody off. Oh, what is Ed just said? Oops. Oh, he forgot to do one combat over here. Oh. Yep. Nacho has a soul, though. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lewis, Lewis is actually in the chat saying, <laughs> I do a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> yes, but none of them involve Kings of War. <laughs> Most of all, cocktails at, uh, at three o'clock in the morning. That's involve your choice of beard style, Lewis. I'm just saying. You know. <laughs> Seven wounds. Lewis, you should get a beard like Patrick Zora Allen. Look Ooh. at that. He looks like a swordsman. That that's gonna get oh. him. That's a wow. That's oh, wow. that's gross. Oh um, dear. Oh so. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh, this is bad. Ooh, Ooh this is really that's bad. Uh, that's Where's his big army gone? Of going <laughs> so elite as uh, as Sam has, I mean, he only had eleven drops. That every loss is really felt. Good thing you remember to go back and do that one, huh? Oh, <laughs> it's bottom of hmm. three. Yeah. Oh, Sam. All right. His All right, army so just evaporated. At this point, if you're Sam, what do you do? I don't know. For for those of you just tuning in, uh, Sam lost a Night Horde and a Order of Redemption Knights and a Horde of Water Elementals in that turn. Also um, more than a third of his scoring units. Yes. Yeah. We had eight to start with. Um, yeah, you you have to figure out how to get your your Pegasus's Pegasi? Pegasi with your tokens across and you have to do something to get that, that Forest Warden to drop those three or keep him on the other side of the table. Otherwise, you know, if he, if he makes it over the line, then, then your, your best outcome is a six to, six to four loss. Um, so those, those unicorns might be able to get a clear shot on it. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the way, so the chances are it'll still be covered. I think that Pegasus just turned and moved, it turned further than it should be able to. Because it's not nimble anymore, it doesn't have those two turns that he's just given it. It was facing mm -hmm. um, downwards. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's overturned. I mean, at this point, we don't blame him. You know, he's screwed. But... It, it seems in general they've forgotten about... Because uh, if that Force Warden wasn't facing that direction, it seems like they might have both forgotten about uh, losing nimble. And, I mean, that brings up an interesting thing. As uh, as somebody watching a game, do you, if you see mistakes like that, do you point them out to the people playing, or if the if the two players are fine with it? I mean, only, at least they're both playing the same rules, you know. Only if you're TO. Yeah. If you're just observer on the outside, then no, you don't. 
Yeah, only if they ask, or like if it's a if it's like a club game or something like that, and you're deliberately like you're all together playing a few practice games for a tournament, then I would. But like if I was at a tournament and I was just watching games, I definitely would say anything. Yeah. In, in a practice game, you wade right on in, right? You're doing oh, yeah. it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you point out what's, what's wrong and you also point out how to do something that they, they may want to do and how you actually do it mm-hmm. so they say I want to travel, I want to go attack from there to there, how do I do it and you go well, there and there and turn there that will get you around it so that's a ballsy move there yep he's going in on the uh, on the um, Gur Panthers so he's ignoring the he's just going to get surged though isn't he he's got there's, yeah, there, there's three surge, surge right there. Avail- yeah. or surge casters available. Um, I guess he's, he can't shut them all down. Yeah, I, I guess he's just well. If he if he can, no, he can't kill the Gur Panthers before the lightning bolts come through. Um, to to give it a clear shot, I guess he's just trying to get get as close to the forest warden carrying the tokens with his with his available combat unit as possible. To be fair, it's the best choice that he's got there, isn't it? Rather than hit the ones in front of him and then get triple quadruple charge the next turn. Yeah. What's the sound? What, where did two tree uh, herders facing? Forward, right? Or one, right so oh, there's one's left, one's right. One's right. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, those one elementals are pretty much dead with the will fodder facing to the right. Uh, yeah. I'd be interested to see where those order of redemption with uh, sharpness end up after withdraw so you might be able to get a flank on one of those guys it's unlikely but that that is something i would check oh yeah that's nice i mean it's uh, a, there's no it's on defense six though and there's no thunderous charge yeah. so what's and the no main chance i think we've just charged the desperation charge the unicorn into a uh nice. Horde of Shamblers. i support that fully oh no he's changed his mind Maybe not. <laughs> you heard you, Steve. Okay, it's time to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <holy shit. laughs> do, do. Well, when I, when I played against Page New, he had a, a bloody unicorn, and I sent a, a regiment of nightmares into it. It killed them. I sent another regiment of nightmares into it. It killed them. I took It took four separate regiments of nightmares to kill that bloody unicorn. Yeah, unicorns are they're, they're pretty good. They're 12-14. Defense five. You know, defense five, three attacks with under one, under one crush one. So yeah, yeah, they crush can actually, one. Uh, they can actually do some damage. Under one crush one, that's interesting. They actually what have more damage attack than the Revenant King. And they, of course, have the have the all important keyword majestic. <laughs> Jonathan Falk has that keyword. keyword. You may not know that, that but uh... uh, absolutely, I, I, I was about to say, Steve, that that's, that's a silly magic tip that's used by me in so many ways. <laughs> I look forward to the Kings of War like, supplement uh, that that gives uh, special rules to anything that has majestic. That'll be awesome. Yeah, but <laughs> it's the, the crown of majesty. <laughs> I, I much must admit, I'm looking forward to the uh, the supplement. The magic supplements. The uh, yeah. it, it looks a bit bonkers, um, but I think it it, it may hopefully loosen up the uh, the community a bit more to uh, to be more friendly games, more of a laugh games mm-hmm. rather than just you know smash your face and. I'm gonna have to make some friends so I can play against people. You know, not in tournaments. <laughs> and that is something I definitely like miss, um, especially Austin is very tournament focused meta, where. Mm-hmm. Everyone plays the same points level as whatever the next tournament is for the majority of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like playing just one off silly games is, is something I, I definitely miss. Yeah, it looks like he heals five off of those Redemption Knights with sharpness. Woo! And back down to two wounds. Is he rolling the uh, regen yet? Mm, no, I don't think he has. I think he may have forgotten to roll regen on everything. <laughs> I think he's forgotten to regen the rule. They do, don't they? Five up regen, yeah. Redemption knights. That's why you. That's why you take them so you can have regeneration. That's why they're good. So so far, everybody's forgotten regeneration. Yeah. Good work, fellas. 
So well, since, it, the health, since, doing fine. Since, since they're playing for the favor of the Green Lady, she's like, okay, nobody gets to regenerate anything for this game until <laughs> I've decided. Yeah, yeah, who I choose. Gets to regrow. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Felix Castro says, John 100% has the majestic keyword. John, the John <laughs> fan club is growing. Oh, yeah. When I started playing Kings of War, I, I constantly confused Felix Castro with Patrick Zora Allen. I don't, I don't know why, but I think it's because they've got an X and a Z in the name. And I'm like, oh, which one's which? I don't even know. Still, <laughs> no, it, yeah. So you have this unit four in charging against the four shamblers. Does two wounds. Go on, unicorn. Oof, 18 oh, hits. Oh. 18 hits from the sharpness knights. Go on, Yes, yeah, seven damage. Oh! oh and a 10. And Mace, a second roll. Do it again. And a nine! And a nine. Yeah, and nine is just short. 16. No, it's just yeah, short. Oh yeah, yeah, one short. Yeah. Dash seventeen. Ooh. Is that tree herd in the flank there? Uh, yeah, it, looks good. Like it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It is. Yeah, does that? Uh, That's bad. It's goodbye for the redemption knights. Still don't get this one elemental charge because he can charge a will farther into them or into the unicorn as well and still be able to surge with the uh poor shambler. Felix said I should have confused him with Alex Chavez, but that assumes that I know what anybody looks like. I only heard your names <laughs> on counter charge, right? So you hear somebody's name on counter charge, you're like, I know all about this person, no idea what you guys look like. I just have mental images of people. I think it's just the uh, last names Castro and Chavez. All or right, similar. That makes more similar ish. Sense. Chavez is a second U.S. master. He uh, beated me in order to get there too. What a what a dick! All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he he got down to one second when he rolled his nerve for my Lacanus, <laughs> and I kept on thinking it's like if I only turn my Lacanus around, made him roll triple attacks. <laughs> yeah, not that you're bitter at all, right? <laughs> okay, so the uh, Gur Panthers are smashed. Sorry, going back to the game. Oh, sure. the game. Yep. Sorry. Oh, there's a game on. And he's turned uh, turned to face the flank. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that seems yeah, so the, to be Those four shamblers shouldn't be able to uh, I don't make surge into your flank, at least. No. But, oh, that's awfully close. I think the wolf father might still be in the front. It doesn't matter. The wolf father can't get past, though, can he? He's not nimble. No, and uh, there's no way to disengage the four shamblers away from that unicorn. Yeah, that's nope. true. Uh, while still main maintaining the in separation. That was a masterful. But the tree herder can. Oh, what's it called? The forest warden can go into the flank. Well, of the well, that would be incredibly dumb. Can he just charge straight through the unicorn? No, he's um, disordered it. He hit them. Yep. So he, he uh, this order <laughs> unit cannot charge through. Ah. So, I mean, the Willfather could surge that Force Shambler forward, and then the Force Shambler could charge the flank. Um, it, it, you know, Force Shambler forward probably won't kill a unicorn to the front, sadly, but it, it means that the water elementals are much more likely to be picked up. He could multi charge the Willfather and the sh and the herd and the Shamblers into the unicorn. Mm -hmm. And that protects his um, forest warden as well, who can then, sh you know, sh shuffle up the middle. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at what I'm laughing at. We're just making all kinds of trouble. All kinds of You're trouble. You're welcome, Bob. Dash 28 <laughs> assumes no responsibility for club changes that happen during broadcasts <laughs> or any sort of social fallout that occurs thereof. <laughs> He's in Lancashire. The punishment, he gets spanked with a whip hit. It's quite a... Uh... Right. 
All right, so they, it seems like they did remember the rule of the uh, nimble and uh, the Pegasus because all he did was turn around. Okay. Yep. Um, and turn, turn basically to stay out of the uh, charge arc of the storm wind. Mm -hmm. And now he moved 10, but the avatar has blocked off his movement. Yep. Nice. So Good me. Yeah, there's no way he's going to be able to get out of that right now. He can still probably t move and turn and stop them charging him for a turn. Yeah, using the they're, rock. Close, they're close enough that it looks unlikely. Um, so unless something happens, uh, it looks like the max amount of points Sam is going to, is going to score is two right now. Yep. Um, got these two easy, yep. He could still potentially pick up the Force Warden. I don't see how he could actually hold on to those points, though. What's he doing with the other two unicorns? They went to a really weird place. Uh, he healed the uh, oh, right, right, right. last turn. And yeah. Did the other one do some lightning? Or? And, and interestingly enough, he, he charged the one that has Surge into right. the uh, Forest Shambler, so that when, when when that gets punched, he's going to lose his option to surge his water elementals. Next it's turn, not going to have much uh, opportunity to, but that is yeah. something that uh, Ed doesn't have to worry about anymore. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so Ed's trying to maneuver the Forest Shambles around a little bit. See, so uh... trying to get a flank. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to get. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, because he won't hit flush. And yeah, his point up. is uh, is in the flank. So as long as, long so as he needs makes contact, he needs two. He needs a two. Yep. Yeah. There's just a little bit of a pixel, a little bit of green right there. Have we decided? Is the line the one inch? Is it inside or outside? It's, I, I, I do. If the line is touching you. Yeah, I think we've been playing it like tennis, where like if the chalk flies up at all, then it was in. Yeah. Okay. That's good because that's what I played last night with John Guns, and it was it was like two pixels. You know, I had to get the high definition screen on to have a look at it. <laughs> that was a great match. It was a, it was a draw in the end, was it? Or yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, I really enjoyed it. Was, it. It was like two units left on the board. It was <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Ironically, you're playing ogres. Yeah. There you yeah. go. He's done exactly what I said he should do. I'm brilliant at this game. <laughs> why am Why am I not winning more? <laughs> well, double charging. Double, double charging, charging father. Very sensible. Or shamble yeah. against the unicorn. Make sure, make sure you kill it. Yeah. Oh, so you can, that's interesting though because he's using then he's using the uh, what's it called the um, the one with the tokens to do the surge. He's only got surge four. You can really easily fail a surge of two with surge four. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if they've discussed in their back channel that he only needs one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's he's, what he was given. Yeah, if they haven't looked closely. Yeah. He's going to roll four, four ones now. Three ones and a two. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the heel from the green lady. Nice. So four out of six, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, those redemption items in big trouble. And this should be the surge roll coming up. Here we go. Here we go. If we get a flank charge. Two. And that's yeah. two. Okay, he's got the two. That's a good thing to mention. Like, if we're, we're taking, you know, hypotheticals here. If Ed did not kill the Night Horde, and we have heal 18 coming in. All right. Um... It seems like Sam has gone all in on the, you know, you're not going to take very many of my units out in one go, and I'm going to heal them back up. Uh, which seemed yeah. like a good bet against this four chamber list, because four chamblers aren't known for being able to kill things in one go. Uh, but it, it does show the weakness in that, that if they do kill something, uh, you're kind of left in the lurch. Well, it's also... Ed's, Ed's put um, at least two units into everything is attacked. So he's, he's up for a complete overkill, which is how you should be doing this game. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you can't do one-on-one -on -one chats and well with most units they expect to anything but a bounce mm -hmm. i think it's really interesting because ed essentially set a trap didn't he on turn one and i was looking at it and um the way that you said it Patrick, was just just let them charge you i didn't even think of um so i think it's just it's just um experience isn't it in knowing what to do when somebody sets a trap mm. yeah he chose to spring it with one unit but that led to then a cascade of 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 units being wiped off right mm -hmm. it's actually knowing what to do and how to avoid traps in the first place and if you're going to spring a trap you spring it in a way that you've got a backup plan yeah, yeah. we lost a 250 point unit without any gain yeah yeah not enough and chaff but yeah that, that probably forced made him feel like it was on the back foot himself and things that had to start killing stuff which compounds into worse and worse mistakes but he's put he's got two units of brilliant chaff in this list which he has not used as chaff he's, no, given, he's, them he's, given, tokens. he's, he's given them tokens yeah so if if they were playing a different scenario they they might have approached it very differently right and also if he or even if he were playing the same scenario if he put those two tokens on the strider uh order unit there the only thing that could have could have killed them was the silver breeze because you place the tokens after deployment, mm. and in which storm case, wind. or storm wind, sorry, the storm wind, um, and in which case the, the storm wind have a Pegasus and another order of redemption shielding for the uh, the order of redemption tokens. Okay, that's the last last night regiment gone. Yep. It's, it's looking. There's like a few more forests on the board than when it started, and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They are being nurtured with the blood of knights. The green lady is pleased. The uh, water elementals are, if they're not going to go this turn, they're going to go next turn. Uh, it's okay, but a unicorn's going to survive. <laughs> so I feel like at this point, the only hope that Sam has is to kill whatever holds those three tokens in the center. Right. And fight for a draw. Yeah, lightning bolt. Um, lightning unless, bolt. unless you can kill the silver breeze on or a storm breeze when something with weather uh, on the left. Uh, in which case, his Pegasus will be free again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, Why are we talking? The wolf Father and the Horde of Tree Herders against the Unicorn? Yeah. Let me show you something useless. I, I, I paid to print a tree, uh, these, these SD. I paid for some SDLs for some trees because I wanted some nice trees. And look how nice this tree is, right? Really nice trees to print. Except, look, they print like this. <laughs> it's the worst possible way to print anything in the world. So there's a great big line through all of my trees. Ten dollars for that. Ten dollars. <laughs> I'll give a good question, Felix. Is there a way of table flipping in Universal Battle? There should be. Ah, oh, yeah, uh, table flip would be awesome. So the, the best way of table flip, I think, is if you go to the terrain function, unlock it, and change the table size. It'll just yeah look super weird. <laughs> I think that's how you uh, table flip. Yeah, make it like a one foot by one foot table all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Or a, a one inch by 130 inches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he did not snake eyes the uh, unicorn. Ah, um, oh, everyone's oh, disappointed. Um, and he's repositioning the wolf father and the horde there. Um, yeah. I mean, it could be hilarious if turn five he lightnings off the <laughs> the forest warden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's going to be so many, so many things so close to that. Uh, I mean, it should, be trans it should be in transfer now to the to something, something actually decent. Yeah, who's, the, uh, uh, who's top player? Uh, Sam's top player. Yeah, yeah that's uh, if he was bottom player, he might have uh, might be able to pick something up and do something cheeky. But as top player, it's always going to have to be, be able to respond to whatever Sam does. I think you know. Being wiped out by turn four is pretty bad. 
We're doing on a live stream when there's loads of people watching who are your friends and peers. <laughs> That's, uh... hmm. um, so if you're interested in having one of your games streamed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you when, too, when are we going to see the Adkins versus Morish match that's been threatened? That's what I want to see. <laughs> Well, someone else would have to host it, right? Because that would be. That's a... all right. We've got Dan yeah. Miner. He's absolutely competent. Plus, his wife joins in from the background. That's right. <laughs> or Brennan would probably do one. Right, so, what does y'all think about the FAQ? Uh, about the supposed change to charge rules? I don't think they have changed. I think there's no uh, change. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's. I think it was. Uh, I, I suspect is we're trying to, uh, trying to make it a bit clearer and then making it extremely muddy. Uh, yeah. okay. uh, and then a comment by Matt James, which is, I think has been taken massively out of context, and uh, everybody's now going. In fact, by the time this is over, there may well be an update. I think from uh, RC on this one. Right. Yeah, I think I will to see and rather one point two very quickly. <laughs> I think the most the most sensible suggestion I've seen is for there to be an official rules committee Facebook account for yeah. comments, yes. right? And so if it comes from it, it's not just like, well, this rules committee person said this, and this rules committee person said, forget it. It's 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 boring. Let's just you know yeah. make it sensible. So and also because then you can go to that rules committee person's that rules committee account's page and see all the comments they've made. Yeah, yeah. Because like also it because I mean one downside of being an RC member, everyone take is treating your word as law so you can't just yeah. speculate on yourself because yeah. like and having a a facebook account that is like just called rc or kings of war rc would mean that you know the rc members could be more a part of the community and people won't you know take their word as as a rule book yeah oh, oh, that Yeah, so you'd make that a Facebook page, so that way you could make them all admins, and they could just swap back and forth without having to log in and out. Or, mm -hmm. or just have one person as the spokesperson who uses that page, and then they, yeah. right? And that's the person, and even that can even be a Mansi, well, maybe not a Mansi person that have the capacity, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be Danky, it could be Matt James, whoever, um, but the, the idea is that they only post when the RCF itself comes to a consensus. Yeah, right. Like say, it's, 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 it's a consensus opinion that's been thought through as well when a lot of times and i do fear you know i do pity them sometimes they get asked for a clarification mm -hmm. and they give what they almost instantly respond back to people and that's that's great but it can lead to yeah don't want to say that yeah and then, and then that's you know in memoriam that's then photoshopped and pictured and saying that's yeah. the answer that's the answer and you go you missed the I mean, contract I, yeah i think i'm pretty good at understanding the rules but i have definitely been wrong before the thing is yeah. when i'm wrong it doesn't matter yeah when an rc member is wrong then all of a sudden that's what what the rule was yeah and then then it becomes they you get the trolls and they go oh he's like kings of war is so complicated really <laughs> really we've had we've had Possibly two things have caused problems ever: count mm -hmm. the charging and the withdrawal one inch, or you know that's the yeah outing. Yeah. Compared to uh, Fancy Battle, where there was that open warfare virtually every tournament on on interpretation mm -hmm. of the rules because it's so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's, and like, it's one of those things that people who don't go to tournaments or don't play outside of a single community don't get as much because back when I went before I went to tournaments. I didn't get the whole like, oh, the rules could be interpreted in this completely opposite way. Mm. Um, and it, it's just something like I, I just never thought of that the rules could be like when, when I saw the FAQ ruling today, I was like, oh, it just reinforced like what was already there. Right. Um, it, it wasn't until I saw the blow up on fanatics that I realized that people were seeing that that um, interpreted that you can move move a unit uh, in a counter charge position in order to allow any charge to or virtually any charge to happen it's kind of interesting in the counter charge 
chat that we have for the different hosts in Counter Charge, four of the six Counter Charge hosts have always played it the way that we all understand. Mm -hmm. One of the hosts of Counter Charge has always played it the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them is Mark Zielinski, who doesn't play Counter Charge. I don't think he's a lot. So. <laughs> I think part of it is, like I say, uh, Pat, you know, some of us play in, in lots of different metas and different areas, and, and we meet a lot of different people with different ways of doing it. Uh, so that makes us, you know, it's easier for us to say, oh, yeah, I can see why somebody may think that, or I can see why that interpretation has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you only ever play with the same echo chamber of three people on a regular yeah. basis, and you always play that way, then suddenly someone is having you, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I completely understand. Oh, sorry, he's, wait, so let me cut across you. He's lightning bolting the thing. He's lightning bolting the game at the moment. Oh, sorry, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you bring it back yeah. to the game, please? Oh, there's a game. Yeah. So far, he's, he's only on Google, which is not great, but that is 1113. Um, at the same time, he's, uh, I feel like I would have lightning bolted this. QP dice way. is right. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough. Yep. Nope. I feel like it would have like storm breeze first. Uh, yep. And it looked like right he now he, he did measure over. Easy. He did measure over here to make sure that this uh, Pegasus was not chargeable by yep. the storm wind. So they Don't are charge. obscured enough, and they they are in the oh. flank, so they're not going to be able to fit. But are they uh, an inch away from the green lady? Go a little bit closer. And they're it's like an inch away. away. The no, lady. they are no, they are well within an inch of the green lady. It looks like they're playing oh. on the inside. Yeah, they might be playing the inside. Oh, and meanwhile, uh, the water oh. elementals appear to have picked up the forest shambler horde that they were fighting over here that failed to break them last turn. I said the rifle failed fail to kill them last time. Yeah. So small, small favor there. Are those forest shamblers uh, got charge arc on the uh, nope. water elementals? No, they do not. There is he surge potential, but he does. Well, the wolf can go in, and then yeah. the other, the tree herder can surge the other ones, right? So. Yeah, yeah. The forest warden can treat can surge them in. They've already got seven yeah. wounds on. Them. Yeah, the tree herder tree, is. Are both tree herders uh, in range? No. Okay. Just the wolf father. So we turn four. No. Nah. Top of five. <clears throat> Top of turn five. Uh, and Ed is trying to figure out what to do here. Exactly. Um, I mean, really, at this point, he just needs to walk his three tokens across the line if he's not already over the line and don't die to lightning bolts. Yeah. Right? That's it. If he yeah. walks his, his Forest Warden over and has his Forest Shambler in position to pick up anything, if, if the Forest Warden dies, then he's good. Bear back. Okay. At, at this point, do you go ahead and give the tokens to Forest Shamblers? I think I probably so, would. Cause, yeah, because those, uh, that Forest Warden is in dangerous that position for the uh, Unicorns to be able to charge and kill him. And, and in which case, uh, you, you you can stand on top of it and protect, prevent anybody from stepping on them. Yeah, the unicorns are, are speed 10, so they can get there. And like you were saying, they, they do have three attacks each hit on threes. Mm -hmm. Crush one, Crush thunder's one. Two. Or thunder one, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're uh, just a little forest warden. So you are 11-13, so, and he's already got two wounds on him, so they... They could, on a double charge, conceivably get him. Yeah, I mean, he's essentially um, 9 11 right now with his two wounds, um, assuming he doesn't get healed. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, the, the sending, like, like sending the Wolf Father on his own into the front of the water elementals who already have seven wounds, like, he's got a pretty good chance of holding them there for a turn, if not picking them up. Yeah, you can go ahead and drop the tokens now, send a Force Warden in, and then just yeah. pick them up with the Force Samplers. Yeah. Um, oh, that's true, yeah. You can send the forest warden and the... Yeah, because he's looking that direction, I think. How far yeah. away is the left horse uh, shampler horde from Pegasus? From the Pegasus. Three, six, nine, nine and a half. You, I mean, that's that's not a super positive surge, but that's a potential surge. 
with that portion before an intruder. Yep. Um, and either way, it would block him in. Right. Yeah, it does look like he's moving the avatar. So let's see if he moves that portion of the board over there. Yep, to corral it. See, Chris. Good night. Glad you enjoyed it. Have a good night, Chris. Yeah, and this is where I, I don't know. Bush is Bush is not one of my favorite scenarios because it because it kind of gets down to the end and it's just this this little like walking tokens around or growling tokens. Like it puts, about, I mean, yeah. puts an awful and lot of thing, focus on just one or two units, you know. Yeah, that's also the thing about Kings of War, um, because if it was just kill, you know, Ed has this already won. But since it's, it is a scenario, there is stuff Ed can do to win or draw the scenario. Yeah. Um, you know, it was we, we talked about my game briefly earlier. It's Tom, but like when his night hordes didn't kill, and I was able to pick them up. Like he was very close to still being able to win. Uh, like that's that's what I love about the scenarios of Kings of War. Um, is it it allows even if you're losing on the kill side, it allows you a chance to win on that scenario side. Looks like he might be moving the Wilt Father to the center and not planning on charging anything else. No, he's going to move the Shamblers up, I reckon, and then surge them in. With he the can still do that with the Wilt Father charge. Oh, he's starting the Force yep. Wave too. Um, well, he's going all in, might as well, eh? All right, so his left talk is behind. He's going to sidestep. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, and then walk him forward next turn. Yeah. Sensible. Yeah. Yep. Um, and with Cloak of Death, that puts the water elementals up to eight wounds. And they are dash 17. It doesn't matter if he kills them or not, does it really? Because they're not going to kill the tree herder in a long series yeah. of turns. Well, and, it's, just... and it's top of five, so they've only got two turns. So they would have to kill each of them and then, that's that, and then, then have a turn seven to be able to do anything else, right? Can that left unicorn charge the silver the storm one? No. Uh, okay. no. But they are individuals, so at least turn one. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, fifteen. Yeah, that's, that's way too far. Too far. Yeah, too I don't far see away. a way that Pegasus doesn't give up a uh, that token when this is a poor Pegasus. Yeah, like um, it can it can drop the token and fly away and save itself, but why? Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if the unicorn could charge, you could potentially make it so that nobody picks it up. Um, and in sure. which case, if the other unicorn could could keep the four shamblers on its own half of the board, then you then you honestly, uh, now that'll else will be uh, three to two. Um, I mean, really, if you look at the Pegasus bottom right, he's just sat there facing down. He could have mm -hmm. like moved up into the woods and at least offered a little bit of threat without having necessary to give up his tokens. I just think giving the tokens to the to the Pegasus really has hindered Sam's mm -hmm. gameplay, unintended. Uh, I, I think putting both tokens on the, the far left by uh, redemption would have been a smarter play. Yeah. Given the deployment, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to call an audible. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, it wonder, works and sometimes it doesn't. I wonder if that was his intention re originally, or did he think that that redemption unit could, you know, swing around the side? It's, it's quite a hard choice, isn't it, to to reduce a speed eight unit to five? Yeah. Okay, so now there's. <laughs> Ouch. So there's two Pegasus, there's two unicorns left. Two turns left. Yep. Uh, so is. So is this the point where you just say good game, or uh, do, you, do you keep going to see if you can pick up any more points? I think you keep going just, just for the, uh, the tournament points. Yeah. Yeah. The, the sportsmanship thing to do is keep going. Now, you can you know, speed that up by just saying, like, okay, really all that matters is can these lightning bolts pick this unit up type thing. Sure. Um, and I guess and I guess it is Northern King, so it is all additive. So if there's, like, mm -hmm. one more unit that you could pick up that will bump you over a... Uh, 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 threshold for for 
one more bonus tournament point for attrition, then it's still worth doing. Yeah, what, can he kill? what can he kill on this board with the two unicorns? And he, there's... I don't know. I mean, he... Lightning Bolt 13. He could get lucky with a, with a Shambler Horde. That's unlikely. Uh, Force Warden is definitely very possible. Um, honestly, the biggest thing on this board is, is, is the Stormwind Cap. Green Lady. 16. A Green Lady, too, yeah. And she's, yeah. she's a lot of points. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's pretty good. Five points, thirteen, fifteen, yeah. and she's and she's invisible. She's there, stood there, at the edge of the wood. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm going for. Yeah. So Bob's pointed out that the green lady seems to be loving Ed, which is just goes to show that if you actually bring the green lady to the battle, then you're probably <laughs> going to win. If it's about the green lady, so I think Ed Re Sam, Sam really let himself down by just not even bringing the green lady to a battle over the green lady. That is very true. She actually turned up on the other side. He, he would have been sitting there going, "Oh, ooh, mm -hmm. uh, were we guys, supposed to bring one of those?" Looking great for us. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to pick sides till after the battle. Wait exactly yeah. right. We we're all set <laughs> out right. with a green lady. Hang on, who the hell is that? Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, the way is he going with that unicorn? So that four shamo unit is not over to hang. Oh uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can so it is a it is very much a hail mary. Too. But if he keeps him from going over the halfway point, and if Ed pulls the double one on the Pegasus, that means that uh, it's, a it's a draw. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, a lot of things have to happen there, but that, it is a possibility. Yeah. So you yeah. So you try to box the try to box them in with with unicorns. But yeah. unicorns are individuals, so if, you, so if they kill them, they just try to overrun and keep going. Yeah, and they can just straight up move through. But as shamblers, they, right they can't move very far. Right. And that's you on YouTube over there. This <laughs> <laughs> is my wife. I'm trying to sneak away. in to see what's going on. <laughs> Steve, what do you say about Dan's wife appearing? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? I'm <laughs> oh. I'm going to send like one of those light up on air signs to all of you guys. <laughs> so you I said I'm going to come up and see you. I'm like, that. just pop in. Yeah. Just pop in. It's fine. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Love my wife. Steve is the smart man and knows this is being recorded. So. Yeah, <laughs> we all love our partners, this is right? Cool. Very much <laughs> because they're all like tuned into the uh, Kings of War stuff. Oh, you're I'm on a podcast, none of my family even listen, so <laughs> they, don't give a, they don't give a toss. <laughs> I keep on trying to, trying to tell my wife that painting miniatures is absolutely productive in, in a day, and she keeps on disagreeing with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. There's a game. What's that? Oh, this poor Isn't Pegasus. It's, yeah, it's, uh, there's now Pegasus really droppings bad. all over the floor. They're just like it's, <laughs> it, they are everywhere. Yeah, a little trail of them going around that rock. Little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh, no way back the, the other way. Oh wait, the elves are still there. Shit, where do we We're go? We're on the same <laughs> side, guys. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a really naughty Pegasus. So leading up into this game, I did really like Sam's list, and it's specifically <laughs> because of the Pegasus. <laughs> and then you saw it, and you're like, that ah, no, shit, actually. Well, it, it, it's yeah. putting the tokens on the Pegasus, I think that completely changes his list. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, you have a speed 10 nimble blocker, Pathfinder blocker, into a speed 5 unit, and that changes That's everything about your list. Yeah, that, that you have to protect. Yeah, and those are the units that you want to use to protect your fancy knights and get them like, delivered. Before deployment, I honestly feel like the uh, the knight horde would have been a stronger candidate to carry and so. stuff. So what is he Nine doing with the Pegasus? It oh, looks what? like a lightning bolt, both of the uh, the forest sampler horde. Yep. Oh wow! Won't get it, but that's that's pretty I good. Boss cards twice is technically possible. But now, but why would you put them within charge range of? So many units. That's so he's trying. He's trying to keep us from crossing the board fully. 
is my guess. Right. Uh, we'll be able to shoot him. Right, he's trying to keep him, yeah, boxed okay. up on that side of the table. Sure. But now he just needs to charge one of them and break it and overrun. And right. he's on the, and side the other table. one. Yeah. And he'll get healed and we'll be fine. Double. Yeah. Unless there's a snake eyes coming. <laughs> or a couple of snake eyes coming. Come on, double one. Double one. <laughs> Make it interesting. Yeah. 12, 14. It's good to. It's not given. Not. It's a one shot 12, 14 unit. Nine, crush one, five, four, five wounds, maybe six. And they do hit Ooh. on fours, so who knows what's going to happen. Four you beat dice, he's going to roll ten hits. And 12, 14 is pretty hard to kill with hitting on fours, crush one. Yeah. But he's still over the half, right? The unit's still over the half of the board there. That's more than the majority. No majority. Oh, he has to be entirely. Oh, sorry, not majority. Oh, as we've learned. Mike, how yeah. did you learn that? Do you want to recount the story again? Or uh, no, I got it wrong at Masters. <laughs> oh, really? If you're going to get it wrong, get it wrong in a really, really important place. <laughs> and I got it wrong the month before that at Siege of Augusta, too, and turned a win into a draw. <laughs> <sighs> so, mm -hmm. I I see, you didn't see? See? Didn't learn. At least oh. you didn't, like, not turn a Lycanis like like backwards and therefore uh, <laughs> and lose. <laughs> Yeah. So if there's two scenarios, you can guess that you'll never see at my tournament. One of them's kill, and uh, <laughs> and the other one's this one. Is your yours is um what's the name of yours? It's called um, Vanguard, right? It's called Vanguard. That's right. Mm -hmm. so my Which, friend Matt um, went to your tournament, and he said it was absolutely amazing. He just didn't stop talking about how great it was. I'm is that my, delighted to hear that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Great and he was, he, he was supposed to come back this year as well, but because right. I had to postpone it two months, he you know can't make it. Mm -hmm. And I need to make up my mind in the next week whether I'm actually going to be able to have it or not. I, I was able to slide it back two months and cross my fingers and wait, and the clock is running down, and I'm still not sure it's going to be safe. Mm. That's the thing. I've got, to, I've got one in September, and I have the same problem. It's September 15th, and that seems really far away, but actually, if you look at the calendar, that's not very far away. Yeah. And I just, I just don't know whether it's safe to, to run. We're very populous here, which is yeah. I mean, well, I, I suppose they're flying to uh, uh, Living Legends in September. You're and, not. Uh, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I am currently. <laughs> I haven't cancelled the yet. I, sus I suspect I may be stuck at Houston Airport for two weeks under quarantine. Then, uh, <laughs> 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 then get back to UK and be stuck in quarantine again for two weeks. Uh, Oh, a month of it. oh, it's a double charge on, on the poor Pegasus. It's poor a rear from the Shamblers. Yeah, Matt Matt runs a tournament in London now, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he does. does. Uh, but yeah, Stain of blood. Yeah. It's a good event. I went there and went to the first one. Yeah, I feel like I should I should try to make it over for his because he's come over for mine. I've got friends in London that we should go see. So one of these years I should one of these years I should paint an army that I could fly with and then come yeah. over to oh. That is a big thing. You, you actually got to make an army you can fly with. Yeah. It's, I do want to say bitterness. Right. Just before quarantine hit, I made this beautiful flight case lined mm. with metal, all lined with. Nice. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, useless. That's definitely the way to fly. That's that's how I traveled through my first master. I had a. Uh, for my really, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, they, they, they really like metal metal encased uh, bags. <laughs> they absolutely adore them. <laughs> that's 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 a that's a glove ever just went <laughs> <laughs> apparently nick had that problem because he used slate in his bases which shows up as cocaine on scanners um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not i'm not entirely convinced by that but according to I, 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 I think nick I, I, was just I, a shady like, looking individual yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah he's cocaine a drug look at him in scanners no, 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 no. We use we use dogs for that here. We don't use scanners for yeah, cocaine. Yeah, you got scanners for cocaine. Mm. You look for you look for amorphous amorphous material with uh, metal bits in it. So uh, plastic with um, you know, plastic miniatures with I don't know metal bits onto it or pegs yeah. or, things or things like that. That's exactly what they look for. Interesting. So that was the shamblers into the back of the Pegasus. 
Uh, yeah, that's yeah. not going to end well, is it? 20 wounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor Pegasus based. Pegasus based, right? Just hang okay, around. Talk- Who do you think is going to win, guys, anyway? So <laughs> we haven't talked about that. It's too soon to say. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, Bob did leave a mammoth in uh, his box for uh, entire. entire oh, did you get to deploy it? it didn't no. deploy a mammoth until turn five or something, until after the game. <laughs> That's my first tournament ever. Well, this All is right, the. So what's this? Oh, this is the forest tree herder on the. Uh, tree herder into the, uni- on the unicorn. unicorn. Five wounds. Not dead. And a six. Will not get it now. And now. Oh, it looks like the green lady healed as well. Healed the shamblers down to two. Yep. Which is rude. Oh. Uh, ten, ten ten. Hits. Who said ten hits? And they're elite. And, uh, and the an elite picks up oh, two conversions on hits. the elite, so twelve hits. Six wounds. I mean, six wounds. Are they defense five? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Seven, seven, fourteen. Seven, fourteen. And again. That'll do it. And waiver. Oh, that'll waiver. be a waiver. It's not as good as getting a with uh, what's left on the board. Yeah, considering he picked up the other token on the other side, now it's fine. Like, he doesn't Game have to walk over, man. Game over. Yep. So the, the way Sam can win. If that remaining unwavered unicorn charges, does three or three wounds, and kills in turn six. That, that's all he needs. No, that's a draw then, isn't it? It's a draw. A draw. Because the, yes, yes, the other token's already over the line. But that would be a moral victory at that point if he can pull that yes. off. <laughs> and that's what he's doing. Extraordinary. Come on. Come on. <laughs> do it. Do it. What does he need? So he needs three damage. Three damage and double box cars. Yeah. Double box cars. It's going to happen. And it's guaranteed. It's got, it's got how many attacks? Three. 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 Okay. Oh, oh. Oh. Spoiler alert. Ain't going to do one it. One wound. <laughs> Just the one. Pathetic. Mediocre. Tom Robinson would have made it. <laughs> I, that's that's one thing people just have never got. Like Your, your number one battle plan should be to roll better. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, how I, that's how I won. That's how I won against Tom the other day. I just rolled yeah. better. Uh, and that was the roll for turn seven, so no turn seven. Game oh, over, seven. man. Game over. How, how bad do we make Sam feel in the post game chat on a scale of <laughs> one to ten? You know, that you are terrible. <laughs> terrible. I think I think the the, uh, the English crowd think he's Spanish, and the Spanish crowd think he's English. I think is the uh, yeah. I would say uh, I think I'll leave it to you, English chaps, to figure that one out. <laughs> I'm bringing it back in now. Yeah. Oh, I like Sam. Let's go ahead and just get that out of the way. All right. So, do we, uh, are we going to have any questions for them? We were curious about why he put his Redemption Knights in charge range of the. Uh, Silver Breeze, uh, Stormwind. Storm yeah, why didn't he put the tokens on the... Uh, yeah, why didn't he put the tokens on Stormwind? Uh, so we'll give them a minute. They are probably doing the math on uh, math points and things like Mike, that. Mike, it's maths. Is it maths? maths. Is it plural? Math. Yes. Do more than one math? Mathematics. <laughs> if you only add two numbers together, is it still maths, or do you have to add more than two numbers for it to be maths? No, no, just two. We add more than one number together. Whatever, two numbers, it's maths. Okay. What's that spiky thing on the side of your wardrobe, John? We have a spiky thing on the side of our wardrobe. To your, to your right, right, right here on your screen, there's something. Oh, no, it's not. It's, do you know what it is? <laughs> it's on the screen. If you look at the edge of your wardrobe, it looks perfectly like the edge of your wardrobe. It's actually the background well, it's, image. It's the background. I'm like he's got some kind of staff <laughs> uh, leaning against his wardrobe. Yeah. I thought you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. There. That's the. So. There it is. So it's the green lady herself. You can see the background image. Yeah, there she is. I made a separate background image for it. Sweet. What's that? I can't see what that is. Oh, nice. 
That was my Ryan, first trip to uh, to Lone Wolf. Went to the uh, shooting range. The first time I ever fired a, a handgun. Are you in your spare room? Like I'm in my spare room. We've got a disheveled bed behind us. Yeah. It's actually my office. I've got a bed in my office. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's the same here. This is my office too. Yeah. If we get tired, go to sleep. And I have 12 fat mats on the floor behind me. There you go. <laughs> every every TO has that big pile of fat mats somewhere in their house. And two, right? four boxes of terrain. Yep. Uh, so for those of you watching, uh, we have a lot of content lined up for you coming up this weekend. Uh, we're going to have two matches on Friday, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Uh, on, uh, assuming everything goes to plan. Um, so uh, on Friday, we should have uh, Tom Robinson versus Brindley Smith. Uh, and then Paige Neo versus Keith Randall. Then coming up on Saturday, we should have Kyle Peach versus Paul Brown. And then Stephen Devinish versus Tom Ennis on Saturday evening, which is the top table for yeah. the tournament for this round. Uh, and then on Whoa. Sunday, uh, we're going to have Mark Cunningham versus Devlin Smith. <laughs> that be hilarious. That's going to be hilarious. Which will be funny. Be hilarious. That's like the palate cleanser after the top table match. Yeah. I love it's Mark. Like, He's I think, mad. I think, have, I think we just have those two mic'd up and just don't have any commentary. Just just those two. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just leave them in the studio and everybody else just leaves. We'll, like, we'll just come back in a couple hours. Whatever you guys do is fine. Yeah, it's like your it. mad uncle that, you, you, you know, gives you fireworks at the age of seven. Here, go and light these in the park. <laughs> it's hilarious. He's that kind of guy. Also a TO, though. Runs a really good tournament. <laughs> have, have we lost a minute? Is, is Sam still wiping tears? Oh, he's back. Sorry. Uh, he's hi, back. Sam. Hey, hey, Sam. I have a rude hand gesture that I'm not going to show on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> We feel your pain. That was that was excruciating at some points. Yeah. So we did have What's the uh, point in all that heal if you don't get a chance to use it. Right. Everything get knocked off in a single turn. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so we we did have a question about uh, Sam about your your positioning of your. Uh, Order of Redemption Knights with J Boots, uh, when you're moving them up the left side uh, and you move them into charge range of uh, the Elf Cav on the hill, um, the, the Stormwind Cavalry. I, ascent. I knew that it, I knew the risk. I felt I needed to force, I need to force a choice. I knew that it, I knew the risk. I felt I needed to force. Because, um, because, um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, otherwise, if I only offered one target to it, if I only offered one target, would be a little bit too easy. Everything um, would be a little bit too easy. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> okay, I don't really know. Me, a weird echo. Yeah, I think maybe, uh, yeah, I think I can pick it up. Someone, someone's speakers is picking up uh, the microphone, maybe. Uh, so, do you guys have any other questions for either of them from the match? Yeah, it was. Um, I kind of felt like Sam. What you need, kind of, what you lacked was like the chaff in your army, but you put the tokens on your chaff. Was that a deliberate choice rather than just kind of sticking them onto a, on the night hall or one of the other units or something like that? Is to say, I'm just going to sneak them around the edges, but. Probably. I kind of felt like you needed those chaff to kind of make I your army work. I both on one of them. The yeah, I made a last minute last last That was a last minute decision. It was, yeah. it was definitely wrong. That was tough. Yeah. But I, I think also, I think, you know, Ed, he rolled really well to get the, the Night Horde off. I mean, potentially he could have had a quad charge with a triple charge. Ed, were you kind of, how confident were you, Ed, that you were actually going to get that charge off and take that, that Night Horde off, which was really critical to the success of the game? I wasn't that confident, but I was confident that even if I didn't kill them, they could only kill one of those three units that were fighting them. Yeah. <laughs> and they then have one tree herder and four 
you know, either two tree herders or one tree herder and a horde going into them for the second round. So I was pretty confident that the combat would go my way. As long as the um, the Redemption Knights that were fighting the Shambler Horde didn't take it off in one. And they were not likely to do that, even hitting on twos, because they had no thunder of charge. Neither of us had any bane charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was not that, you know, both of us could have done with it against all that big sky. Yeah. But it was worse for Sam, I would say, because of course he's only got the thunder of charge on most of his units, whereas my, my Shamblers do at least have crushing one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I I could have engineered a flank surge, I thought, into the horde of knights that turn, but you know, I didn't think I needed to, and there was a risk in that. If I doubled one of them, then I'd give the redemption knights a flank into into the horde of shamblers that would have gone into the flank of the, of the knight horde, or even into the into the um, elf knights if they hadn't broken through in the same turn. I mean, you know, he had a turn where he took out two hordes of Shamblers, and then I had a turn where I took out, you know, a regiment of Redemption Knights and a horde of Redemption Knights. And the water elements in the same yeah. turn. And one yeah, that was, yeah, that was a big, that, big, big, big turn. On and that turn, I was actually looking on the first round, the first chart, the first round, uh, you know, when I sent in a horde out of regiments, and I needed something like six damage. Uh, but then second round I did really well and took them off. And that, yeah. that at, at that point, your army, I was a little bit worried because the kind of strength of your army was the layering of it. You know, you <laughs> had these layers and layers of, of quite uh, durable stuff. But because of the way that Sam had spread out, um, you had to kind of kind of go out like this. And your army looked quite strung out and I was a little bit worried for you. But then you managed to take those water elementals off, and you, which meant you didn't have a flank and all that kind of stuff. So it was... It suddenly looked a lot. It suddenly brightened up incredibly. The sun came out on your army. It says this, <laughs> most of Sam's army did just disappeared in turn three, which was incredibly unfortunate. Well, you know, I, I said at the beginning, you know, green shirt, green mug. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Sam made one crucial mistake right at the outset. To be honest, I think the two most important roles were the role to choose sides, which gave me that really, really helpful forest. Mm -hmm. that, that I could come up behind, but it, you know that made it much easier for me to get to grab the, that, that sort of token. It definitely and made it give it a lot of sense. And, so, and this army, on all any any of those scenarios where there's a central objective that you can take, that you pick up in turn one. You know, it's absolutely great. That's that's the forest warden's job. You know, yeah. he comes up there. He's got two nimble pivots because he's he's vanguarded up, scouted up. And he can be pointing in whatever direction I want him. And so you know that th those were those were absolutely you know massive roles, and I won both of them. Of course, you do lose nimble when you pick up a token. Did you guys do, know, yeah, remember that? But he doesn't pick it up until he's done his pivots. Right, got you. So, you know, after that, he's stuck. You know, speed five, no nimble. But he's got the, the crucial thing is that I can point him in the right direction. So I, I was able to point him in a direction where ten inches would put him on top of the. The other the other two tokens that i was <laughs> going to drop from the forest chamber horde because we were kind of umming and ahhing about the fact you put the tokens on an 11 13 unit essentially you know the weakest yeah. unit in your whole army when you've got defense six bad guys there that could literally just take it and go come on then <laughs> take me yeah. i'm going to last anything there's no there's no crushing strength in this army to be honest you know as long as the wilt father and the, and the other tree herder are still swinging this army will continue to do serious work right up to the very end. Mm -hmm. so the way I want, you know, and most opponents, quite rightly, don't go to them first because they're so hard to take off. So I wasn't that worried because I thought even if even if he's killed, as long as I win, you know, on that side, I'll have something, a tree herder or another forest chandler horde that can pick up the tokens later. Right? And because he, you know, his Pegasi were carrying tokens, they weren't going to fly over and, and grab them. So, I, I mean, it was a risk, but, you know, I had the Gur Panthers to throw in front to, to make the shooting harder, and, and they did, they, they died, but they, they made it hard to kill the, the guy carrying the tokens. Now, going back to Sam, you, uh, you said this was your normal list that you put into play all the time, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if you're looking back on this, uh, with the ability of the arms change your list, would you 
the, the, the biggest downside to your list is everything is so fast that when you put a loot token on it, it really hurts it. Yeah. yeah. Do you wish that you swapped out something for, you know, like a men at arms regiment or incinerable regiment or something like that? Or I guess it's probably. I would, but, yeah. I would have got myself into the same sort of trouble because I'd still have a unit being left behind. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really solve anything. Okay. Normally, what I would do on this token is a, on this scenario is just stick both on one Pegasus and just play play one Pegasus down, usually, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I do anyway in most scenarios. I get one Pegasus sort of goes off on its own out of the way where it's not going to really get involved much. If there's um, objectives for it to get or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I, so it's what I would normally do. I didn't do it this time because I thought I'd be reasonably able to um, I'd be I'd be reasonably able to hide them mm -hmm. from anything that would come to them, especially because um, Ed deployed in a sort of very, very narrow space mm -hmm. and sort of had nothing on the flanks really. He kind of did an interesting refuse so what, flank, but in the center. Uh, but, you know, using the block. Yeah, he refused brain. both flanks. Yeah. 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 So one, one side deployed, I thought... Yeah? Carry on, sorry. So w once I saw how we deployed, I thought I had flank really really quite easy for the Pegasi to just get up there and essentially not get involved in the game mm -hmm. but once once the knights fell in one hit that was always going to be very difficult from there yeah uh, yeah I, expected I mean yeah. something to tank some damage something yeah but uh, you, you don't normally look at four shamblers even with elite as uh, being able to pick up things in one go but Ed was very good in making sure that every charge of his was, for the most part, multi multi charges. Yeah, and had a lead. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yeah. I'm I'm not used to playing heavy scout either. The only yeah. person I usually play with heavy scout tends to be very very aggressive, which just tends to play into my hands with this with this list. Mm -hmm. He tends to be far too aggressive. The scout he'll um put the extra speed items on a couple of units because he likes getting his turn one charges yeah but it tends to go quite badly because i get hit by two units they don't do very much they get multi-charged and we start the game again and he's two units down yeah yeah i, I think that's a really good point that ed showed just because you have scout doesn't mean that you have to use your full scout movement to get up um, Ed was able to use his scout to get in a better position, but still not offer any first turn charges if, if, if the turn one roll went badly. Mm. Yeah, and especially with scout, the way I deployed my horde behind the forest was not clever. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it, it kind of did mitigate a lot of your speed and uh, <clears throat> control advantage doing that. Yeah. In, in most games, it works quite well because I just move up into the forest and then I'm protected and I can, yeah. I get a lot of board control mm -hmm. if I get the chance to move them up. Yeah. Right. I've been mainly worried, Sam, that uh, Jose Maria has said Sam will be punished uh, <laughs> in the uh, YouTube live chat. So I'm not sure what that means, but... Uh, I don't know if we want to know what that means. <laughs> um, he needs to be. He needs to remember what happened to hit to him in his game. <laughs> against all right, the, all right, here we go. All, against all the depth horrors. Oh, that's never good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good game. We really enjoyed watching it. it was a. Uh, there was some good uh, chat going on. I got spiked. Yeah. I, I definitely yeah. learned a lot watching. I'm not being funny. Yeah, great. Very oh, thanks for yeah. commentating, guys. I appreciate you picking our game. And I'm very glad it was one of the yeah, ones where we didn't do anything horribly wrong and lose bad luck. Right. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. Imagine well, thanks, that. If you lost badly on a live stream. Oh. 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 Thanks for thanks for letting us uh, look over your shoulders terrible. while you played. Uh, congrats to Ed on the win, uh, both in the tournament and for earning the favor of the Green Lady. And uh, good bu uh, good luck to both of you in the remaining rounds of the tournament. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up now. Uh, thanks to John and Steve and Patrick for helping me commentate this match. And once again, thanks to Ed and Sam for letting us uh, watch. Uh, you've been watching Dash 28 Live. Uh, join us again this weekend for tons more matches of the Called Arms Universal Battle Tournament. Uh, listen to Counter Charge if you want to hear Steve talk some more or check out Death by Dragons. Either way, you can see his pretty hey, face yeah, on one boy. and hear his lovely voice on the other. We'll just throw pitches out like crazy here at the end. It's fine. Anybody else got a podcast? John? No? Maybe? Uh, yeah, I do live streams as well. And live Oh, yeah, the Four Foot Snake uh, the Four imitation is the sincerest, sincerest form of flattery. Imitation. Yeah, we do the we do the slightly less professional version. That's um, all right. Fun for the whole family. Yeah. It's good. So until uh, next time, uh, folks. Uh, not the whole family. Not the whole family. Not the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the whole family. Uh, <laughs> until <laughs> next time, folks. Uh, you say you stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time on uh, Dash Twenty Eight Live. Mm -hmm.